Sprinkles if you got them. Jack's Donuts, find a location near you, now. This is the Frells family's land. When the sun comes out, the kids run and play right there. This used to be a shed. Now, it's where they get breakfast. This is more than just land. It's home. The Frells family runs with us on a John Deere 1 Series tractor. This land isn't the only thing that should live on for generations. Nothing runs like a deer. Search John Deere 1 Series for more. Visit Reynolds Farm Equipment, your hometown John Deere dealer today at ReynoldsFarmEquipment.com. You're good at making big announcements. We're having a go! <laughs> We're good at your insurance. Start with Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance, online, over the phone, or in person, and stop knocking on wood. Warehousing to transportation and everything in between, Piper Logistics does it all. Centrally located, Piper Logistics has two warehouses in Indianapolis and a warehouse in Cincinnati, Ohio. Piper Logistics houses over 1 million square feet. Along with our transportation department, we can provide service to half the United States markets. Craving comfort fresh food made from scratch daily? Check out Aspen Creek Grill. Located across from Hamilton Town Center and beside the Holiday Inn, we offer family farm raised premium black Agnes steaks hand cut daily, creamy pastas, salmon chicken, and fall off the bone ribs. Start with our famous powwow shrimp appetizer and don't miss our refreshing drinks. Family friendly or a great night out with friends? Aspen Creek Grill. Aspen Creek Grill, Noblesville. Call 317 559 3300. Burtner Electric Incorporated has been proudly serving our residential and commercial customers with quality electrical repair for over 33 years. We are fully licensed and insured in electrical wiring and electrician service packages. You'll receive a competitive assessment, whether you're a homeowner or a business owner, first time or long time customer. We offer free estimates for any new project. Call our licensed and experienced electricians today. wanted was to feel loved. He said he loved me. My friends told me it wasn't a big deal. They thought he was so cool, but they didn't know what he wanted me to do. All I ever wanted was to feel loved. You have no idea the kind of pressure I felt to take things to the next level. Things were moving so fast. I was basically the only person in the freshman class who hadn't done it yet. So, we did. I loved him. I thought she loved me. My health class had CPR at school. I stayed after class to talk with the instructor about it. 
They showed me that it didn't have to be that way. They showed me that I get to make my own choices. There is another way. That's the best thing CPR gives you. Another way. A better way. A healthy way. Sometimes you don't see it because you're in your own world, but they don't make you feel bad. They talk to you like a real person and they save kids from really unhealthy decisions. They tell the truth and they know what they're talking about. So yeah, my life was different. I started to choose the better way. I honestly don't know where I'd be or what I'd be doing had it not been for CPR. You want a career that creates experiences that are impossible to forget. By studying sports and events at IUPUI, you'll get hands-on experience in and out of the classroom. And with Indy as your classroom, there are high-profile events, sports franchises, hotels, museums, and large organizations across the city to engage, educate, and enlighten your student journey before you graduate. There isn't a better city than Indianapolis to get the experience you need to prepare you to handle any event, big or small. It all starts here. High school sports fans, welcome back to Game Time, to Pure Spirits, to Pure Sports. Welcome back to High School Sports. Fans, I'm IHSA Commissioner Paul Knighty, and I just want to say, welcome back. This is Game Time. This is Indiana High School Sports. This is your IHSA ad. You want a career that will transform your life while you change the lives of others by helping them live well. With a health or exercise sciences degree from IUPUI School of Health and Human Sciences, you will gain an in-depth understanding of the healthcare industry while preparing you for a variety of graduate and professional programs in health. And with Indy as your classroom, you will have clinical options within leading hospitals right in our backyard, as well as a degree from Indiana University, reputable leaders in the healthcare industry. It all starts here. Can't get to a computer? Then we've got you covered. Just go to the Indiana SRN app and stay up to date with all of your favorite teams. You can watch live coverage or relive the experience with our on-demand service. After the Marine Corps, I was diagnosed with PTSD and became homeless for 15 years. Like a hermit living on the street, I just existed. I came to Wheeler Mission. Wheeler operates on a culture of kindness. Going through their programs reminded me that my meaning in life is to serve God. God set me free from anxiety and depression. Before Wheeler, I just existed, but today I live. Sprinkles if you got them. Jack's Donuts, find a location near you, now. Hey conductor, how about something new? You played this last year. Come on, get your head out of your sacks. Shh, we're trying to hear. Well, I'm sick and tired of hearing your kid play the wrong notes. Where's my kid solo? At least you can see your kid. Why is my kid stuck way in the back? Hmm? The conductor only plays his favorite. Move! I get hurt, not solo! You see it like it? Yeah, Come on! Good afternoon. My name is Jay Jones. I'm the commissioner of the Heartland Collegiate Athletic Conference and we're excited that you joined us for today's webcast. We're thrilled to have this relationship with Indiana SRN and we're excited to show you the game of the week each week showcasing some of the best small college football around the Midwest. We hope that you'll continue to watch and let us know what else you might want to see. 
You can go to www.heartlandconf.org to see stats, game recaps, and other information around the league. Until then, enjoy today's webcast. Not much more you can ask for to decide a conference championship game. Welcome to Cincinnati, Ohio. The two best offenses, defenses, undefeated conference records. Oh, and also Mother Nature has decided to play a factor into this one. The fighting engineers of Rolls-Holman set to go back-to-back -back in the HCAC, but they meet up with the Mount St. Joseph Lions, who have yet to lose a game this season. You're watching the HCAC Game of the Week on Indiana SRN and HCAC.TV. Today's broadcast is brought to you in part by the Morales Group, building better futures one story at a time. Burtner Electric, serving greater Indianapolis and the surrounding counties. Piper Logistics, from warehousing to transportation, we do it all. And by Reynolds Farm Equipment, serving our customers and the community since 1955. The regular season finale is here. Sean Crow, we are so excited to witness this game between Rose Holman and Mount St. Joseph. Rose Holman, like we said, won this conference last year, but the Mount, 9-0 this season. A, a perfect season, which something they haven't done in nearly 20 years is finish the season undefeated. They haven't been to the Division Three playoffs since 2009, something else that they are trying to to end that streak here this afternoon. And they, they want to uh, avenge, I would say, last year. They played at Rose Holman for the conference championship as well and kind of got worked. I believe the score was 58-21. to 21, But, you know, my only complaint is that it's not still snowing. It was amazing when we got here seeing the snow come down, uh, looking for some snow angels in the end zone. But it is going to be a fantastic football game today. I couldn't be more excited. And when we got here, this field was entirely covered with snow. So <laughs> the, the grounds crew, as you can see, has done a nice job. Started off by clearing out the yard markers and then the boundaries and the hashes. So a perfect field, perfect field conditions uh, for these two teams to do battle, which we could see some of the best running offenses which has been the, the case for the entire season for both these teams but we may see the run game play a huge factor into how this one gets decided this afternoon yeah you're talking about some of the best players in the conference starting with Cornell Beecham Jr. as a senior uh, he leads the team in rushing with just shy of a thousand yards averages eight yards a carry uh, 104 yards per game has nine touchdowns but don't forget about Jake Taylor. He has an arm. He runs the football very well, too, and has rushed for 12 touchdowns on the season. So if you're thinking turf is wet with snow, we want to run the football, we don't want to throw it, they can do that. But they can also sling it around as they got some great receivers on their side as well. Beecham has nine touchdowns this year, averages just over 100 yards per game. But it, it, Taylor ends up in the end zone a lot more than he does and also has terrific weapons on the outside at his disposal. Two guys who are over 30 catches this year. Leading the team is Joey Newton with 33, but there's Beecham as that running back coming out of the backfield also with 30 catches this year. A, a terrifically balanced offense is Mount St. Joseph. 270 yards through the air, 226 on the ground. And that's what the RPO does for you. It, it's, it really depends uh, on Jake Taylor, or excuse me, Josh Taylor. Uh, Jake Taylor, that's Major League, by the way. Uh, Josh Taylor and how he reads the defense as he's either going to hand the ball off or run himself and throw. So the key for Rose Holman is to play their assignments. But even with that being said, you got guys. I mean, Quinnell Beecham Jr., you, know, you talk about the fact that he's a running back. He's a better wrestler. 
he knows leverage. He knows how to get low and, and to get those tough yards. You know, he's only a D3 national champion undefeated That's exactly as, right. as a wrestler. So great athletes out there on both sides of the football. At 174 pounds, he's never lost a wrestling match while he has spent his time here at Mount St. Joseph. Taylor's numbers, super impressive. We'll see how much they throw the football here tonight. Over 4,400 4, yards passing, excuse me, and 45 touchdowns. But you got to watch out for his running ability also. Speaking of running the football, Rose Holman, they got a pretty good guy in that backfield in Grant Raperta. How about seven touchdowns this year and 81 yards averaging on the game, another extremely balanced offense in Rose Holman. Just look at what he did last week. We we came into the game at Hanover. You know, you look at the weapons they got outside with Jalen Hobbs and Huey, and then they give the ball to Roberta for 40 carries, 204 yards, three touchdowns. The, the SRN Player of the Week. He just took it to him, and it wouldn't surprise me to see them lean on him quite a bit today as well. Along with Jay Smith, he gets some good carries to give Roberta uh, a breather every once in a while. But it all comes down to Miguel Robertson what he does under center, again, with that, the RPO, which with both schools like to do, which is why they're so um, explosive offensively. 250 yards through the air is what Robertson is averaging. Takes care of the football extremely well. Through their nine games, just four interceptions. We, we've you know been so impressed at the smarts uh, of the guys at Rose Holman, all these yeah. engineering majors and, and how successful they are going to be and you can see that also on the football field when you look at numbers like that just four picks thrown this year by Robertson he's been fantastic and he's got weapons all around him I mean Jalen Hobbs has nine touchdowns Daniel Hurry has ten touchdowns uh, uh, Ty Salu who's their third option Oh, only has eight touchdowns, and their tight end was a first-team All-HCAC selection in last year. So they, they've got weapons offensively. I'm interested to see their game plan today with the snow on the ground. It has stopped snowing. The wind isn't as bad as it was. Wouldn't be surprised to see them throw the ball some. Speaking of those weapons, you mentioned Hobbs, and you think one of the keys to this game is going to be in the special teams category, and Hobbs is a terrific punt returner and kick returner. He can make... Uh, something huge happen and give a nice spark to Rolls Holman, but also along the lines of special teams is the the kicking game that could very well play a huge factor into how this game goes. The, the, you know, with with the way the field conditions are, the footing is going to be huge. Extra points, uh, kickoffs, punts, all that kind of stuff is going to be real important, especially when you're playing a field position game in, in such a, a big game like this. But at the same time, you look at Jalen Hobbs tie, has tied the Rolls Holman record for most return touchdowns in a season with three. Cornell Beecham Jr. has one as well for, for Mount St. Joseph. So special teams, I think, will play a huge part in how this game turns out. The Fight Engineers, they've won the last three meetings between Mount St. Joseph trying to make it four. The Lions come into this one actually nationally ranked at number 22 in Division Three. We'll take our first break. And we'll come back and break down more of this conference championship matchup between Rose Holman and Mount St. Joseph on HCAC.TV. Welcome back to Cincinnati, Ohio, the decisive game on who will be crowned champions in the HCAC. There is Mount St. Joseph in their all-Navy blue. Coach Hopperton, he's in his sixth year coaching the Lions, but has only won one game against Rolls-Holman. The fighting engineers have had the better end of MSJ over these past couple of years, but this Lions team, like we said, they have not lost a game this entire season. You're on your home turf. What are some of the keys you think, Sean, that you can see MSJ coming out on top after this one? 
Well, I think they want to establish the run early. Keep, kind of keep uh, Rose Holman off their, their toes in Josh Taylor keeping the ball and also giving it to Cornell Beecham Jr. But I think for both squads, third down is going to be the key. Mount St. Joseph averages 50% on third down, a little bit lower for Rose Holman, but they're both giving up defensively around 30% conversions on third down. I think the teams that can convert on third down and get first downs and keep the chains moving is going to play a huge part in who wins tonight. Also on senior day for Mount St. Joseph. So everything you can imagine thrown out into this game and becoming a factor. We'll step aside one more time. We'll come back and we'll have the kickoff between the Fighting Engineers and the Lions. Hey folks, good to be with you for tonight's game. My name is Andy Simpson and I'm a licensed IHSAA football official and welcome to Friday Night Football powered by Indiana SRN. On behalf of the 340 football officials, the IHSAA, the crew here at Indiana SRN, we hope you enjoyed tonight's game. And more important, don't forget to subscribe to the Indiana SRN YouTube page. As you're watching tonight's contest, I'm going to show you a few of our signals that will help you better understand the information we are trying to convey. Touchdown. Safety. First down. Holding or illegal use of hands. Encroachment or offsides commonly known, false start or illegal formation on the offense, or a free kick scrimmage violation, face mask, intentional grounding, roughing the passer, clipping, illegal shift, illegal motion, illegal block, pass interference by the offense or the defense, delay of game, and the one signal we dislike, and you as fans don't like seeing, unsporting. We'd like to thank everyone for tuning in tonight and following us on CNN and SRN. You can also tune in to the Football Weekly Show and Coaches Show every Saturday morning at 8 a.m. on IndianaSRN.org. Finally, if you've ever thought about becoming a high HSA, and click on the officials tab or call the IHSA office at 317-846-6601. Now sit back and enjoy the game. At Morales Group Staffing, we are all about building better futures. And during these times, we are working hard to put people to work. We are now hiring for hundreds of jobs with pay up to $17 an hour. Visit our website at moralesgroup.net or text JOBS, J-O-B-S, to 317-472-7600 to apply now and get hired today. We encourage you to follow us on Twitter, at Indiana SRN. Find upcoming games, video highlights, and much more. Follow us now, at Indiana SRN. For the second straight season, the HCAC Championship will be decided between these two teams in the final week of the regular season. The Lions are looking to finish the regular season unbeaten for the first time since 2004, and it's all about getting that redemption. The Fighting Engineers winning this contest last year when they met up 58 to 21 so handily. You gotta think, Coach Hopperton, a little extra spark using that for motivation. Now that you're on your home field this year, you're trying to cap off an unbeaten season with an HCAC championship. Not this Jet, that Jarrett, but the fact that the Rose Holman has won 15 straight HCAC games uh, going back to the spring of the 2021 season. They haven't been knocked off, and they don't have any reason to believe uh, that it's going to change today. But I think the Mount ha has, has some things in store for them. And being at home is going to be huge for the Lions today. How is it going to? How are the fighting engineers going to handle it when they get punched in the mouth? And there's no. If you, if you look, there's no cheering section on the other side of the field behind. Rose Holman. I think that makes a huge difference today. Rose Holman coming off their victory against Hanover last week where they were on the road. They 
also won that game handily, 47-17. to Coach Sokol fired up after winning that matchup because he knew what was at stake next week as they travel here down to Cincinnati. Rolls-Holman will defer, so that means we'll see the offense of the Lions out onto the field first, and quarterback Josh Taylor, one of the captains, heading back over to the sideline to get his offense prepared. You know, I think Coach Hop is actually okay with that. I think he wants to come out and make a statement and, and, and throw that first punch and nothing better than by getting your offense out of the field and taking it down and sticking it into the end zone early uh, to, to let the, the engineers know that they mean business. A much closer game last week for the Lions to hold on to their unbeaten season, topping Franklin 27-20. to Always a tough place to play over at the home of the Grizzlies. As we are just moments away from kickoff. Yeah, the game October 22nd at Hanover was pretty close to 44-29. Um, you know, I don't, I'm don't. i pretty sure that they thought that they should have won by more than that. But I think we got us a doozy of a game here today. And I am pumped. Let's go. A terrific turnout despite the weather, despite the elements. Lions fans always showing out. And even some from the Rose Holman community able to make the drive down here from Terre Haute. You can see some of the uh, the dance team handing out mini megaphones so it can get nice and loud here in the stands for the Lions. It is a packed crowd. Connor Whitesell has it teed up. And we are underway. Fielded at the nine by Beecham Jr. Up the middle, just shy of the 30 yard line, a decent return for the Mountain. We will meet their starting offense. 14 yard per return average for Cornell Beecham Jr. And 21 touchbacks for Whitesell as the kicker. But uh, again, the conditions make a difference as you can see the starting line up there. Some of those receivers, seniors, Jake Ayler, Joey Newton. Newton actually just a junior, but we did see earlier today Jake Ayler being introduced as one of those seniors on senior day. Very first play, Taylor flushed out, tripped up from behind. Able to make the tackle for Rolls Holman, Kaiser Bowen, to limit Taylor to just three. We will see him a lot all over the place. A senior from Centerville, Michigan, 69 tackles on the season. Shoestring there kept Taylor from getting a first down. And the rest of the starting defense on the side for Rolls Holman in the all whites. Taylor in the gun on second and seven. Out route towards the sideline, and he finds his man. Hooking up with Omar Porter Jr., and he has just enough for a first. Got to love that. Couple of plays, you get a first down, move the sticks. Quickly back to the line of scrimmage for the Lions. Boy, we thought they were going to come out and run the football. It's like the offense is still opened up in its usual patterns. Keeping that balanced attack well in play. New set of downs, Taylor. At the 45, it's hauled in. And a good pickup on first down gives seven yards to Joey Newton. He is their leading receiver tackle by Shai So, a senior from Decatur Central High School in Indianapolis. We'll hear his name quite a bit too. And they're not messing around. We see both these teams like to score early and often in both quarters, Jared. 34th reception on the year for Newton. That leads the team, as does his seven touchdowns. Love being second and short. Just shy midfield, Taylor. Going to take a shot down the field. Having to adjust is Newton. That's number two versus number two. In coverage was Tice Miller. Tice Miller, first team D3 all region four in 2021. He's got six interceptions on the season. He's their main defensive back in this five DB set 
for the fighting engineers. So the Lions take a shot on second and short. Now it's going to be third and four. Still got a lot of options, and here's where Taylor's legs come into play. If there's good coverage, he can pull it down and run with it. We'll send a man over to the left side, through receiver side. Blitz. Taylor got taken down, but still able to get the pass off, and it looks like he's right at the yard to gain. That was Beecham Jr. with the reception, and it is enough to move the, the sticks. Riley Roberts with just a little bit of a delayed blitz there, right at the middle, nobody to block him, but luckily Beecham was open. Great job by Taylor getting him the football, just enough for a first down. Taylor standing strong in the pocket and delivering a first down strike. And rolls home in territory at the 49. Off of the edge, that pass is high over the hands of his intended target. That was Zykeem Hunley. Hunley averages 26.7 yards per catch on the season. He is their big hitter in terms of plays downfield. Just a touch high. And it appears... Sean, back-to-back -back passes. Taylor kind of might have trouble either with the grip or just, just the release. Wet football. Beecham on the carry. Trying to get the edge. He'll pick up a couple of yards. And forced out of bounds by Kaiser Bowen, who thought he may have had the football. You can see you can see on that play, you know, the – Oh, there is a flag as well. But just the, the, the steps in terms of trying to keep – the, their feet on the Number 11. on the field as they're going to get a holding call and set them back. You know, Beecham was afraid of slipping, so it looked like he was tiptoeing a little bit on the snow. That was Hunley who gets called for the holding penalty. That'll set him back 10 yards, back to the 41-yard line. Now here's where things get interesting. Both offensively for Mount and defensively for Rose Holman. Passing situation, it appears, upcoming for the Lions. Taylor looks to his left, one receiver side. It's hauled in, and they're going to pick up a big chunk of the yardage they just lost and some more. It appears third down and six upcoming after the catch from Porter Jr. Big play. Must have been a busted coverage or something. Rashard Brown and Riley Roberts kind of confused over there on the sideline. And great look from Taylor to get the ball out quickly to Porter and get third down and manageable. Winston Amonkwa was the DB on that side, and he came in after Taylor. Third down and six. Taylor wants Beecham to start up closer towards the line of scrimmage. Play clock is at two. Now at one, Taylor gets it off. Flushed out, rolling to his right. Will lob it up down the field, looking for Newton, who stopped on his route. And good defense to get the third down stop from Rolls Holman. That, that, again, if this is a clean field on a nice day, Newton might be out there to catch that football. Taylor just let him a little too bit, and we'll get our first point of the game. And Rolls Holman gets off the field on third down, one of the keys we talked about. Both these teams are really good in the third down conversion category for Rose Holman, 42.5%. And Mount St. Joseph at the top of the conference, 50% conversion rate. And here's where the weapons for Rose come into play. Heary and Hobbs both can take this football a long, long way. And making sure that none of those guys touch the football on the punt from Murray. He pins it inside the 20 at around the 17-yard line. That's perfect for the mount. Pin him down. Don't let a return happen by kicking it to the corner. Better start. Now let's see what Rose can do on the offensive end. More closer to the 15-yard line is where the fighting engineers will come out for their first offensive drive. Robertson in the backfield with his tailback, Roperta. The receivers near side. Robertson looking that way. One of his receivers falls down. It was Hobbs. This one floats over to Ty Salia who makes the catch. 
and has a first down over to the 30-yard line. Some pressure on Robertson, but luckily Ty Salia was so open over here on the right side that they got a first down, and both teams coming out slinging the football. Not something we expected with this field conditions. And the pressure coming from behind, but Robertson gets it off just in time. They'll start off with the pass, and now the first run for Roberta, who's close to the sticks, just shy of the 40-yard line to the 39. Linebackers coming up to, to make the play. Actually, safety Devin Donaworth from Lawrenceburg, Indiana. By the way, his high school, East Central, still in the playoffs in Indiana. And they're going to play next week in semi-state action. Slant route, Ty Saliu has the first down. Two catches for Adam Ty Saliu, who is third on the team in catches, now with 38, which would be first if he were playing for the Lions. Quick hitter. This is Hobbs trying to get the edge with some wide receivers blocking out in front, but it's a minimal gain on first down. In conditions like this, Jarrett, it, it's, it's important to understand the offense has the advantage. Why? Because they know where they're going on their routes. The defense doesn't, and they have to adjust, and that's where the footing comes into play on the defensive side for both squads. Starting defense for Mount St. Joseph. We'll come back to that after this run by Roberta. That goes for two yards, and now the first third down situation upcoming for Rose. Looked like Declan Brophy in on that tackle number 44, as well as Nick Stevenson. Brophy on that defensive line. This is third down and seven. Rose just shy of the 50-yard line. Two deep safeties. Robertson feeling the pressure. Throws it into a tight window, and it's going to be converted for a first down. And there is Jalen Hobbs making his 41st catch on the season, a tremendous playmaker. Nick Stevenson, the star back for Mount St. Joseph, knew that was coming, sagged off of Greasock, the tight end, and still they found a tight window to get it to Hobbs. Hurry up offense. Another slant to Ty Salia, but this one off the hands and will fall incomplete. I'll be honest with you, Jared. I am I'm surprised that we've seen maybe just a couple of runs from both squads so far in these conditions. Now the hurry up offense slows down just slightly. Grisic, the man, in motion. They follow him with Roberta, but he is stacked up at the line of scrimmage. Didn't get too far getting into the backfield to bring him down. Noah Hammond, the 6'4 senior from Brookville. He leads the HCAC in tackles for loss and sacks, and you can see why. Now you got third and long. Here's where the Mount can get off the field defensively. Rose at the 40 of Mount St. Joseph. Robertson, one receiver side, throws it up in the air, and the penalty marker comes flying in, trying to hook up with Ty Saliu, and he got a nice bump from the DB in that area. Looks like it was Deshaun Starks. It was Starks. Looked like there was some hand fighting going on, but uh, I, I might give Ty Saliu a, an Academy Award for that performance. <laughs> And you can see Starks pleading his case. I agree, that was a awfully close call. <laughs> so on third down and 10, Rose trying to pick up 20. You can, you can hear the crowd didn't like that call very much. <laughs> They're using those megaphones that they just picked up from the cheer squad and voicing their displeasure. So that penalty... Moves Rose up to the 26-yard line. Call it the 25. 16th first down by penalty for Rose Holman offense this year. Swing things out. This is Curie on the catch. And on first down, he has five. Mason Owens and Donaworth there on the tackles. And they're going to get their athletes in space, Jarrett. Hobbs and and Huri as well as Roberta. They want to get them those quick hits out in space and, and make defenders miss with the slick turf. Three receiver side now moves to the top. Rolling out that way is Robertson. Ty Salia, who's right near the stick. He's going to be a yard just shy, but Ty Salia already on this first drive. Four targets, three receptions. This is going to be tough for the defensive coordinators playing some soft coverage. 
just to make sure they keep everything in front of them because of the slick conditions and the footing so nobody gets past them. Third down. The alarm sounding in the stadium here at Schuler Field on the jet sweep. This is Hury trying to get the edge. He's going to. He have just enough to pick up a first down. It has Roseholman at the 12-yard line, so in great position here. They could actually pick up another first down before scoring if they cho choose to. Greesock and Roperta both made great blocks on that play to give Hury the, the space he needed to get the first down. Robertson on the snap. Looking wide open is Hury, but he just overthrows him. Ooh, that looked like a blown coverage. The Mountain got away with one there. So far, it's been a lot of three receiver sets combining Hobbs, Hury, and Tice Salio. That time, Grisic was on that side of the field. Yeah, it looked like Austin Price came in to be to get the coverage on Hury and just stopped, and Hury got by him. Second down, Robertson. Towards the one receiver side, Ty Salio, there he is again. Reception number four, it's good for six yards. They've decided to pick on the junior, Mason Owens, over there on the right side. And Ty Salio has four catches already? Just those quick little slants. But look where they're at. Third down and four. Pitch, Roperta. Trying to get to the corner. He dives for the pylon. No signal yet. He's going to have enough for a first down. But no score yet. Rose will have first and goal from the one. Love the call there from Rose. The, the quick pitch from Robertson out to Roperta. They strung him along enough. Boy, my. Roperta, it's a direct snap to him. No. Is he in the end zone? They say no. He's marked down just shy. Robertson was split out wide. Direct snap to the tailback, Roperta, but he's stuffed. We're going to go same formation, Jarrett. This is key. Once you get hit, it's going to be hard to keep your footing on this turf. Grisick in motion, and a huge hole opens up for the touchdown. Grant Roperta. Into the end zone, the fighting engineers strike first. Boy, coming in on the road and getting the ball on your first position and sticking it all the way into the end zone, punching the mount right in the mouth. Huge response coming up for the Lions here after the touchdown by Rose Holman. Another look at it. I could have ran through that. Yes. <laughs> I was just with about to say, just about anything could have ran through my that. Sun, my sundial right. speed could have made it. The holder is Chase Wilkinson. Place kicker is Kyle Reberg, the sophomore. And his kick is blocked on the turf. Mount St. Joseph has a chance here to pick it up, but oh. stumbling after falling on it was Mason Owens. So there's a little bit of a life. We talked about special teams being a huge part. Right there now, you've got an extra point that got blocked. Oh, well, great push. Yeah, coming right through the middle for the mount was Chandler Rutherford so that keeps the score at 6-0 Rose Holman is out on top my name is Brittany a little thing I love about the egg white grill is the toasty English muffin it's toasted perfectly it's just a little crispy but not like hard crispy but just crispy enough that when you bite into it everything is perfect <laughs> My name is Curtis, and I love the egg white grill because the egg itself, it's like soft and fluffy, like a pillow. I, and I, and I, I would eat my pillow, but I'd eat <laughs> the, the Chick-fil-A breakfast egg white sandwich for sure. They say nice guys don't finish first. So maybe it's time to reconsider what it means to be first. It's about being your best, but knowing you could be even better. It's being present. Well, respectful of history. You sure you want to make that move? It's donating something more valuable than money. It's believing in yourself. It's something bigger. It's coming from different families. We're treating each other like brothers. It's not just being a man. It's being a Mason. Go. Right in the middle of the Rose Home and Kickoff from White Cell. And it gets behind Beecham. Has to pick it up at the two. And he gets tackled in the end zone. Oh, they're going to say it's forward motion. 
wasn't there. Boy, that is not what you wanted. And again, it's the conditions, Jarrett. The ball bounced and just kind of died. It was like a a sandwich that just stuck and rolled right underneath of him. And their backs are against the wall. White Cell had it drop right in front of Beecham at the 18. And great kickoff coverage there to bring him down. Riley Roberts was one of them for Rose Holman, and he'll stay out there. Number 11, around the middle of your screen. We'll call his name a lot today, too. He's all over the place. Taylor stands in the middle of the end zone. A handoff to Beecham Jr. He gets stacked up his forward progress. He lost a yard, but he does still get things out of the end zone. Here's where field position is so important in special teams again. The, the kickoff was, I mean, we, we look at the kicker, White Cell, he's had 21 touchbacks. He couldn't get enough on it for it to roll into the end zone. So Beecham had to pick it up. There to stuff him, Andrew Walkowski, senior from South Bend. So now second and 11 from the one. Taylor will look to pass, pick up some yardage on the connection with Zykeem Hunley. Got a little bit of space there. Again, big third down for the Lions. If they don't get this here, that's a huge field position flip for Rose Holman. Third down and five. Would love a conversion here to prevent your punter from standing towards the back of the end zone. Newton in short motion. Taylor looking that direction. Clean pocket will heave it down the field. has got a man. It's Porter Jr. He got behind everybody. And across midfield, a huge pickup for Mount St. Joseph just like that. They're under Rose Holman territory. Ran a couple of guys short and left him all alone with Brown in the backfield. Got behind him. Great throw by Taylor. Had all day to throw, did Taylor. Looked like zone coverage there from Rose Holman. And that's the play the Mount needed. That's right. Porter Jr. with his speed gets behind the secondary and they'll try to go for it all here again with Hundley on the other end. He's just out of bounds. He didn't catch it anyways, but back-to-back -back deep balls thrown by Taylor. But I'll tell you what, give credit on this drive, Jared, to Kandra, Stuteville, Mabe, Salyers, and Martin. They're giving Taylor a lot of time to go through his progressions to find receivers and, and stay back in the pocket without any pass rush. Got to give the big boy some love. Oh, there's the there's the lion in the stands. Mascot is yeah, here. Gotta love it. Everybody out in full force for the Lions. Beecham haven't called his name a whole lot so far in this first quarter. That's just his third carry, and it goes for two and a half. Shai so coming in, just like a a rocket from the this DB position to stop Beecham, and we're at third down again. It looks like they're playing six DBs. Because they got two safeties. Yeah, they got DBs all over the field. They got five defensive linemen, most of them standing up at the line of scrimmage. Taylor with one last read of the defense. Looks towards his right, floats it up down the sideline, but running out of room for Porter Jr. Again, they went to the one receiver side trying to get behind that secondary. Tyler Smith got a bit of a pass rush there, forced Taylor to throw it early, and didn't give his receiver enough room to catch it in bounds. The offense is going to stay out there. Ooh, you like this call? I do. It's early, yeah. I'm an offensive guy. Okay. I, I'll take right. it. It is early, like you said, two receivers both sides. Taylor trying to go with the hard count, and he may take a few steps back and just pooch this one. Trying to get it to the corner. Pretty good punt, and it <laughs> just sneaks out. How about that placement wow. from the quarterback, Taylor? The referee marks it out at the three-yard line, so well done by Taylor to pin Rose Holman back deep. Well, now you got to stop him because first drive, Rose Holman went right down the field. I thought that just missed the pylon. And they keep it marked down at the three-yard line. So 
Mount St. Joseph, that's where they started that possession, was actually at their own two. We were able to get things out towards midfield, and now they reverse field against Rolls-Holman for their second offensive drive. Rolls-Holman's taken away defensively the, the stuff in the middle of the field for the Mount. They'll begin things with Roperta. Stays patient. Follows some blockers for a three-yard pickup. You know, the difference between the two teams offensively so far is Rose Holman's willing to take those small chunks, those quick hitters, the Ty Saliu. The Mount has had a lot of deep passes so far today, trying to get those big chunks. Robertson, catch and throw there, is that man, Ty Saliu, who has another first down. I think Starks tried to cut and fell down. Ty Salou trying to overtake his teammate for second on the team and catches. He already has, what, five already in this first quarter. Well, they're focusing on Hobbs and Heary. Roberta squeaks through for a two-yard gain. The Mount knows those are the two main weapons for Robertson, and that's leaving Ty Salou in, in single coverage. Ty Salou, a pretty... Down tall and, of course, experienced wide receiver and creates a pretty tough matchup for Starks on that end of the field. Back to Roperta. Back-to-back -back carries, and he is stacked up and pushed backwards there initially to push him back with Stevenson. Now our third down again. We talked about it in pregame. Third down is going to be big. Ty Salou is going to be important here. Looks like Starks is on him on the opposite side of the field. But Salou's 6'3". That's huge for Robertson to have a big target like that. Heary and Hobbs are on the near side. Ty Salou at the top of your screen. Robertson over the middle of the field, and it's picked oh! off. Intercepted, high pointing the ball and picking it off, and now a good return for the Lions inside the 20. Intercepted by Austin Price. Huge Great. turnover for the Lions. Great read by Price. If we see the replay here, he's on the right side. He comes off his receiver because he knows he's going to Hobbs. Boom. There to pick it off. And if he hadn't get it, that might have been six for Rose Holman. Yeah, for sure. He had a step. The receiver did on his initial man. but And Robertson with the tackle. Oh, they're calling some crackback blocks on the. On the yeah, there is a flag return. down. That's a huge penalty because the return from Price yeah. got it inside the 20. But after the blindside block, it's MSJ at the 40. You could see it, too, in the replay as, as he came in to, to cut to the right before Robertson got him. You just saw Deshaun Starks lay out a guy. And we'll get another look at it right before the first play run by the Lions. Right there. Nonetheless, our first turnover. Lions with another chance in enemy territory. Taylor. On the very first play, taking a shot. This one nearly, and it is intercepted. Tipped into the hands and picked off. The interception is made by Winston Amonqua. It was tipped by Brown, I believe, but Taylor Thorne in the double coverage. Don't like that call by him. Stared him down. Looking that way the entire way, trying to connect with Porter Jr. The tip made by Rashard Brown, like you said, Sean. And Amonqua is there. And we have two plays, two interceptions, right back to back. That had to be the perfect play. The, the only shot that Porter had was to high point that at a certain at a certain point, but Brown got his paw on it. You can see Porter's upset. Amonqua may have ended up making that interception if it wasn't tipped anyways, but... Robertson is given new life just about right once he got to the bench and the sidelines. He's right back out onto the field. Second down and 11 from the 19. That first play, Roberta going backwards for one yard. 
man, you hate to have that after a big play where you get some momentum in the crowd behind you. Very first play to give it back to him. That's that's a killer. Final 30 seconds of our opening quarter. Robertson hit as he throws. This one's floating in the air, and it's picked off. Wow. In the matter of four plays, we have three interceptions. This time for Mount St. Joseph, it is Starks. I think Hammond hit him when he went to throw it, and that's what popped it up in the air. It was Hammond. And Starks was in the right place, right time. He was trying to go back to Ty Salu. And Talaisu couldn't couldn't make a play on the ball because he lost his footing, trying to prevent the the interception. Boy, this is this has gotten crazy the last couple of minutes. We were talking so highly about these quarterbacks combined between the two, they had ten total interceptions, and now in four plays we've seen three of them. Beecham Jr. with nowhere to go. That's most likely going to be the final play of our first quarter. The Lions will switch sides. They'll head to the other 41-yard line when we come back. A 6-0 score. Rose Holman got on the board first with a Grant Raperta rushing touchdown. We'll head to quarter number two. This is the HCAC Game of the Week on Indiana SRN. can't get to a computer then we've got you covered just go to the indiana srn app and stay up to date with all of your favorite teams you can watch live coverage or relive the experience with our on-demand service Second quarter about to get started here at Schuler Field in Cincinnati, Ohio. Back to the, this is the first interception made by Price. And the Lions on a good return. The blindside block, though, brought them back. And their very next play, Taylor throws an interception, gives it right back to Rose Holman. Right there. And then? <laughs> and then... Another interception thrown by Robertson. We'll check out that one. After this drive gets started again for Taylor and company, there is a completion made to his receiver, Zykeem Hunley, who's had a very active first half. I, I like that play call. Just a quick out, out of bounds. Now third and short. you got a ton of options offensively here, especially with Taylor and Beecham in your backfield. Like one safety deep for Rose Holman. Taylor, read option. He keeps it, gets around the edge. And has enough for a first down inside the 20. Rose Holman players looking for a penalty marker. And they're not going to get one. Huge pickup via the legs of Josh Taylor. Good blocking by the wide receivers. I think So wanted a, a penalty on. Oh, yeah. If you saw Gary Powell, I think, kind of clips somebody on the shoulder pad. But it's missed. New set of downs as they're at the 18. Taylor meshes with Beecham. And second effort. Nice pickup on first down for Beecham. He's got five. We haven't seen much from Beecham today, which is a surprise. They lean on him so much during the regular season. Very few carries today. Tackle made by Sao, the senior, wearing number one. Lions with their best opportunity to score so far in this contest. Taylor, an empty backfield. Yeah, Rose expects the run. They're stacking the line. One receiver side to the back of the end zone. Newton actually hits the pylon. He was trying to get off the coverage of Tice Miller. 
I think Taylor kind of airmailed that a little bit. About the first time in the red zone territory for the Lions. Third down and five. You don't get it here. Do you kick the field goal? I think with the mixed extra point, I think you. I think you're okay kicking the field goal. Newton, the one receiver towards the top. Taylor, a three-step drop. Steps up into the pocket, trying to get around the edge. He does inside the 10 and pushed out of bounds right before he got to the five-yard line. A first down for the Lions. It'll be first and goal. That's the weapon that Josh Taylor is. Going through his reads. Pass rush comes in. Let me pull it down. I see some opening. I would say green space, but there's a lot of white on the on the field as well, but gets that first down. Pretty good block made by Sam Martin. The right tackle. Taylor looking, trying to throw back shoulder, but really good coverage made there for Rolls Holman. That was Ryan Schmidt, who was all over Porter Jr. I think there was a miscommunication between Porter Jr. and Taylor as Taylor came up to him and looked like he said, no, this is what you were supposed to do. You don't expect Taylor to throw in a double coverage like that. Second down. MSJ has things at the seven-yard line. Three receiver bunched up set towards the top. Taylor. Looks again to the one receiver side, floats it up into the back of the end zone. It's hauled in. No, no incomplete. Going back to his man. I don't think he survived the ground. Omar Porter Jr. It looked like he caught it. Pretty well thrown ball. No, he drops it at the end. He did not complete yeah, both the process. Yeah, both on it. Good call made by both those officials. That's so tough when you get the catch, get your foot in bounds, and then when you hit the turf, it comes out. Big play here. Amonqua in coverage. Watch Taylor on a keeper. Penalty marker down before the snap. False start. Dead ball penalty before the snap. It is a false start, so instead of being at the 7, now they'll be at the 12. They thought the Rose Holman player jumped across, which caused him to move. You have a little more room to work with here, and I think I wouldn't be surprised if they tried in the middle of the field. They've been trying the, the edges in the corner, run something maybe towards the goalposts. Now it'll be two receivers on both sides. Porter Jr. and Hunley stacked up at the bottom. That's where Taylor's looking for the moment. Let's the route develop, and he hooks up with this man going back to Omar Porter Jr. And the Lions are into the end zone and for the moment have tied up this football game. Boy, he has had eyes for Omar Porter Jr. all day today. And he was double covered there as well, but just an absolute fastball into Porter Jr. He puts some MPH on this one. Clean pocket and throws it right in front of the defender and now the Lions will look to get a good PAT from Kyle Farfsing, the senior kicker. Oh, the hold was down late and he missed it. It was, it was a high snap, and it had, a, it had a hard time getting it down, and we're tied at six. Not it up at six, 12.33 left to go in the second quarter. Calling officials cheaters or corrupt, it's not a game. Insulting referees. It's not a game. Threatening officials, it's not a game. Berating young umpires, learning the ropes, it's not a game. It's violent language in the stands, it's not a game. Verbal abuse from the sideline, it's not a game. Screaming at a referee in the parking lot, it's not a game. Okay. 
Each team has found the end zone once, but both squads have had missed extra points, so we are tied at six apiece. Here's Hury uh -oh. on the return with a good block from Hobbs. He has the edge at midfield, trying to get beyond Farsing, which he does down the sideline. Hury could go all the way. Touchdown, Rose Holman. That's the weapon that they are with the special teams. Hobbs has three, and here he goes. I want one myself, and takes it on the short kickoff coast to coast. What an answer for the fighting engineers. Special teams, one of your keys to the game, and a well-set-up kickoff return towards the right. What's the saying? Speed kills, and once he got into open space, that was all she wrote. Would love to see the telemetry sports replay and <laughs> I would see I would too. the top speed for Huey on that one. Now here comes the all-important extra point. So after Mount St. Joseph gets into the end zone, this extra point attempt looks good, and it is. So Rolls Holman now leads by seven. 13 to six is our score in the game of the week. From warehousing to transportation and everything in between, Piper Logistics does it all. Centrally located, Piper Logistics has two warehouses in Indianapolis and a warehouse in Cincinnati, Ohio. Piper Logistics houses over 1 million square feet. Along with our transportation department, we can provide service to half the United States markets. We encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Indiana SRN. Hit the bell to get notifications for upcoming games and more. Watch as many games as you want, as many times as you want. The fourth special teams Zero touchdown penalty. this season for Rolls Holman and the first one for Daniel Hury. Normally it's Jalen Hobbs making some noise in the kickoff or punt return game, but Hury, he says, I'll take one also and I'll show off my speed. Yeah, just an unbelievable return there for Huey. And now we get back to the special teams for Mount St. Joseph. Last time they received a kickoff, remember they got pinned down deep because the ball rattled around and went by Beecham Jr. To kick it for Rose. That is White Cell. And he opts to pooch this one and coming in to field it. Beecham Jr. with a really nice return across the 40, close to the 45-yard line. You thought Mount St. Joseph should have just pooched it anyway to prevent Huey or Hobbs from fielding it. Boy, Be Beecham, again, was like shot out of a cannon to come up and catch that on the fly. you got to love this field position, though, offensively if you're the Lions. It's a heavyweight fight. That's what we expected. Yeah. That's what we're getting. Taylor has Beecham on his right. Actually, it'll be Beecham taking the snap and handing off to Taylor. Taylor with the running ability across midfield to the 48. <laughs> Interesting. We know the running ability that Taylor has. He's second on the team in rushing behind Beecham. Number one, I'm assuming so. Beecham didn't think he had any lanes in the, in the middle of his line and just handed it off to Taylor. 58 yards per game running the football for Josh Taylor. Now second and three. They'll switch positions. Beecham will have the first down past the 45-yard line. Already in Rose Holman territory, moving the chains. This is the kind of response you need. Tackler on the play for Rose Holman, number five. Tyson Offensive lineman Bowen. getting downfield. New set of downs at the 43. Continuing with the ground game. Beecham Jr. bounced off the first guy, and his second Jordan effort gives him four yards. I think after a couple of drives and seeing 
you know, the snow get kind of chopped up on the field. Both offenses are feeling a lot more comfortable in what they want to do offensively to keep the defenses off balance. Cornell Beecham Jr., 5'8", 195, the senior from right here in Cincinnati. Throwing the, for the first time on this drive. Taylor down the field. Newton back into double coverage. This one sails out of bounds. I'm not sure Newton might have just the one catch so far, but other than that, it's been pretty good coverage on him. Yeah, again, throwing into double coverage, but nobody running routes in the middle of the field for Mount St. Joseph. Kind of surprising. Newton so far, one catch good for six. Right now it's Porter Jr. setting the pace. Four catches and 86 yards, uh, most of those coming off the 52-yard reception. And the touchdown. Third down and six. You got to think it's two-down territory here, don't you? Would not be surprised. Taylor forced to step up. There he goes again. Picking up another first down with his legs is Josh Taylor. Now his decision making in some of the deep balls that we've seen hasn't been usual Josh Taylor, but his decision making to extend the play with his legs has been there. Yeah, I guess you don't have to worry about it when Taylor can pull the ball down and get you a first down. Taylor again will have two receivers to both sides, direct snap. And a direct quarterback run. Taylor staying on his feet inside the 10. One man to beat, and he stays on his feet, dives <laughs> into the end zone. Josh Taylor does it all to hit Pater. What an individual play. He was set to go behind Beecham Jr. As Beecham Jr. went in before, there was a scrum there, so he took it to the outside. And just look at all the people he makes miss. Unbelievable. <laughs> so many broken tackles, and he's letting everybody know about it. And here we go again with an extra point. Huge kick here for Farfsing. Better snap, better hold, and the kick is pure. We are tied again, 13 all in the conference championship game. So far, this game living up to its height. No team able to escape the other. The second time that we have been tied up. There was the bell. Speaking of, I need to see the let's see if we can get a score for the bell game. Between Franklin and Hanover, regular season finale over there. We saw the bell game last year. That was our game of the week. We saw Franklin upset Hanover. Defiance leading Bluffton seven nothing after one. We don't have a specific score, but Austin Oppel has scored for Hanover. We will keep our eyes on that game as it progresses. To begin this drive, Roberta kind of get taken by the jersey from behind and brought down by Noah Hammond. Hammond's been all over the place. Yes. 6'4", senior from Brookville. Hammond. Brock Harris on that defensive line alongside also with them is Josh Nelson. These other technical seniors still get a COVID year, don't they? Tysalia with this catch. It takes two, three guys to bring him down. A whole bunch of yards after the reception for Tysalia, who's having quite the first half. He is. 
you know, we got a guys listed as seniors here in our program, but there's only a few that went through senior, and it makes me wonder if they're going to take that extra year. But watch him. Look, he's carrying guys. Going back to Roberta, who stays patient, escapes the first guy, gets tripped up by the second guy, and able to bring him down. Donaworth. Devin Donaworth, he's a sophomore from Lawrenceburg. Six-yard pickup for Roberta. He played a ton as a freshman last year in the defensive backfield for the Mount. This is the 14th carry already for Grant Roberta. He does not have a first down. In fact, he only picks up one on second and four. Well, it doesn't seem like he's had 14 carries. Does it? No, it does not. But this offense is staying balanced. Robertson has thrown the football 13 times. Roberta right now just shy of three yards per carry. Big third down here for Rose Holman. Although I have to imagine the Riverboat gambler that is Jeff Sokol, he'll probably go for it if they don't get it. Fans starting to make their presence known. Rolling out Robertson and hit as he makes the reception. The oh, referee marks got a, it. Got the spot. Just there. Is it going to be enough? No official ruling yet. I think they're going to measure it. We got the clock stoppage. It was hurry on the catch. Right now it looks like he's just short. We'll look at it again. Great play there by that was that Price. Price. He had the interception. Chains I, are out. I don't think this matters either way because I think Rose is going to go for it. Looks like it's short. It's fourth and just inches. But I'm with you. I think this fighting engineer offense are still out on the field. Looks like they're going to stay out there. Yeah, when you've got Roberta. I don't think this is a question for the fighting engineers. Shout out to the chain gang. Yeah, you can slowly pull out. Pull out. Thank you. Shout out to them indeed for dealing with this weather. Yes. Roberta alone in the backfield. Grusick motions to the left. They'll head that way. Roberta, I don't know if he got there. It's the spot. It's got to come down to the spot. The near side official comes in. He gets beyond the line of scrimmage, which was the 45, but I believe he had to get to the 44. We're going to get another measurement? No, they no measurement. Stop short. That's a huge play for Mount St. Joseph. Who came in there? Number 34 setting the edge. That is Nick Paff, uh, just a freshman. Hometown kid is the first man to meet Roberta. What a great play. Boy, freshman coming big in the conference championship. So now the Lions take over after the turnover. Ooh, the side judge. Side judge almost bit it coming back to the sideline. They'll begin the drive with Beecham Jr. Uh oh Breaking tackles. Breaks two down the sideline. Gets a nice block out in front of him and forced out of bounds, but not before reaching the Rose-Holman 20-yard line. He actually got all the way to the 18, a huge first play following the defensive stop. Yeah, and watch the defenders in their footing. You can see as they come up and then, boom, they slip. Got a block downfield from his receiver. It goes 37 yards for Beecham Jr. New back in the backfield this time, and he has a nice hole on the left side for Mount St. Joseph, Mariano McKenzie. Only averages seven yards per carry. He gets one play, and then Beecham Jr. is right back in there. I mean, only 37 carries on the season, but seven yards a carry and three touchdowns. Touchdowns. 
Offense slows down just slightly for the Lions as they have the second and six. Taylor with some orders. Now ready for the snap. Wants to go back shoulder. Porter oh. nearly a juggling catch. Oh. That was a perfect throw, too. So he knew the defender was going to have a tough time putting on the brakes. Tyce Miller threw it back shoulder, and he just couldn't hang on to it. Really well thrown ball. I think just slightly more towards that near pylon, and that's that could be six. And if it was a frozen rope that he threw. Nice. I may, may say that. Good, yeah. good, good word choice there. Appreciate it. Taylor, quarterback keeper, another good run. This is where he's so dangerous. When they're in the red zone, this is another first down for Mount St. Joseph. He's just, it's amazing how difficult he is to bring down as a quarterback. Only six foot, but 200 pounds, strong. Man, oh man, he is just elusive. From Mount Orab, Ohio. Hope I said that right. Seven yards to go for the Lions to take their first lead. Beecham Jr. can't make the catch. Would have been shy of the goal line. Good defense there in the area. Kaiser Bowen along with Amonqua. I would have liked to have seen him run it with Beecham there on first down. Kaiser Bowen. Second down and goal from the seventh. Mount St. Joseph brings in. Gary Powell, the 6-2 tight end, on the right side of the formation. 6-2, yeah, 230, sophomore. Blitz coming in for Rose Holman and timed pretty well to stop Beecham Jr., who actually picked up one yard. He could have lost one. Yeah. Bowen just was a rocket through the middle of the line there. Beecham took a shot, but managed to stay on his feet. So now it's third down and goal at the six-yard line. Looks like they're going to go with four wide receivers as Brock came in for the tight end. They're stacking them over here. Top of the screen is Newton and Taylor's favorite target in this first half, Porter Jr., Bring a man in motion now towards the one receiver side up for grabs for Henley and a flag comes in. All right, it's even now with the interference flags as that's going to give him first and goal. Surprised he went to the single side there because he had Brock coming across open on the left hand side. If we can see the replay, you'll see Brock when he came in motion just flashed out wide open. Ball's placed at the one-yard line. Zyking Hunley becomes the lone receiver on this side of the field. Shaiku So, that's not a play you normally see him make, but now you got four chances to stick it in the end zone and get the money that folds. Taylor wanted the quick hitter. Has no one to throw to and throws it. Out of the back of the end zone. Okay, here's a question for you. Did they put it in the end zone here. Do you go for two? Might be too early. Okay. Yeah. Because if you do get it, then you're going to force, eventually, Rose force Rose to go, to go for, for two. two. I like the way you think, though. I appreciate that. Got to punch it in first. Beecham Jr. gets the snap. Trying to get the edge. Dies for it into the end zone. Business as usual for Cornell Beecham Jr. I don't know if, if you saw it there, but Colin Kandra literally blocked his guy almost through the back of the end zone. You'll see it there. It is. You see it there in the back, just all the way through the back of the end zone. That's called holding your block. That is. And they're going to kick it. Both snaps have been high. Another high snap, but it gets down, and Farfsing's kick 
is up. We do have a penalty marker thrown on that kick as the extra point is good. So we'll check the penalty. And it looks like it's not going to matter too much as Mount St. Joseph climbs out to a lead, 20 to 13. What a touchdown drive put together by Mount St. Joseph. Finally, we're getting the call on the penalty. And the penalty is going to end up being declined anyways by Mount St. Joseph. Here they go, nine plays, 55 yards, capped off by Cornell Beecham Jr. into the end zone from two yards out. Listen to the rushing numbers so far, Sean, for Mount St. Joseph, 134 compared to Rose Holman's 39, so Ooh. nearly a 100-yard difference. Yeah, that, that'll that'll get you some uh, some W's for sure. But the fine engineers and their two dangerous return men are back. Fury and Hobbs, 4.58 left to play in the first half. No other score updates from the other games. Just got to hope that stays in bounds. Picked up another return set up towards the right and flying through to make the stop. Justin Drayling, the junior from Cincy. Huge special teams play. Picked up by Lance Shelton, and Shelton actually kind of went backwards, only got out to the 22. I think that with the double numbers, I'm, I think that might have been Ari Turner that made the play. It was driving your Turner. Whoever it was, you got your love. I, I want to make sure. Right, yeah. I, I try and listen to the, the PA guy as much as I can to see who it is, but he came off the field, and I think Dryling's out there now on defense. Robertson hands off to Raperta. Not much doing, maybe a yard. You see Stevenson going for the peanut punch there, trying to punch the ball out from Raperta. Beecham Jr. with his nine carries has 55 yards rushing. And that touchdown score. Give them out their lead. Here's a throw down the near sideline. Jump ball, and it's caught. Oh, wow. What a catch Ty by Ty Salou. Salou. Starks had great coverage there. Even looked like he might have got the hand on the ball, but Ty Salou somehow managed to hang on it with his 6-3 frame. That might be a you got mossed Woo. little situation there. Ty Salou was kind of letting Starks know about it. So Rose is now at the Lions 49. Oh. Little trickeration. The end around Hobbs stacked up behind the line of scrimmage. He's going to turn something out of it from nothing. Boy, how did he not lose seven yards on that play? Kind of feels like a positive if you don't lose that, seven. You're 100% right on that. I mean, that's a huge play by Hobbs to not be second down and 17. Read it pretty well. Did Mount St. Joseph. Brady Bueller was the first one there. Second down and 10. Robertson. Quick hitter. Ty Salou again. Boy, they love those slants with big number nine. Yeah, Starks over there. Deshaun Starks is 5'10. And Salou, Ty Salou is 6'3. So there. And he's using his body as a, you know, as, as a shield for Starks. And just great throws by Robertson to just chip their way down the field. Eight catches for Adam Tice Salou, and he's three yards shy of the century mark. Third and three. 
Robertson checks out the sideline. I assume this is two down territory as well for fighting engineers. Option, Robertson initially got stacked up in his second effort. He gets tackled by Price. Robertson's not a very big quarterback either, but... Hammond got his paws on him, but he slipped away. Watch it again, running the option with Raperta. And it was Hammond who had him in his sights. Raperta up the middle, he's got a hole. Running over, guys. Oh. The truck stick from Grant Raperta. <laughs> Get the Deshaun Starks is looking for the license plate number on that one. My goodness. Down to the 14 yard line. And here it is. Bam. <laughs> That's textbook right there. Back to Raperta. Much smaller hole to try to fight through, but it still goes for positive yards about four. That's the thing about both these backs, Jarrett, both Raperta and Beecham. Low man wins, and even though Starks was there, Raperta got low enough. There's no way the Sharks could grab him around his legs and then just ran him over. Take note of the clock. Rose Holman, each team with all three timeouts, but the fighting engineers in a good position here with the final 90 seconds. Robertson, pump fakes. Over the middle, there's Hobbs. Makes the catch at the two. Jalen Hobbs, his third catch. Nice response by Rose Holman. Going to run the clock down as much as they can here. Surprised MSJ's not taking any timeouts. Not the best thrown ball from Robertson, but it still gets to Hobbs. And has them set up at the two. They fake it to Raperta. Now throwing and nearly picked off for the second time by Price. Dangerous. That could have easily been cut off and heading the other way. Still running. Could be Price. That was a great read by Price and a great break on the, the football. And you are right. Robertson's lucky that's not still going the other direction. Second and goal, under a minute. Clock stopped at 58.7. They bring Hury in motion. The give to Raperta towards the right side. He's not going to get there yet. Raperta is inside the one. Yeah, Raperta's going to get it again. I, this is a case, Jarrett, where I'd almost do the direct snap to Raperta so you're not messing with anything else. Just give him the ball. Robertson still in the backfield. He takes the snap. Raperta up the middle, and he stopped again. Wow. On third and goal, Rose Holman. I'm surprised Rose hasn't taken a timeout yet. They will at some point. Fourth down and goal from the white But do you still go for it? Wow, I wonder One if they're going to. goal. I think they're going to run down and kick the field goal. I, this is. Wow. Calling the timeout at 3.6. They will talk oh. things over. Th this could be a momentum play because don't forget, Rose Holman gets the ball coming out in the second half for the kickoff. They're desperately wanting to get two for one here. Timeout. It wouldn't. Wow. It wouldn't surprise me if they went for the field goal knowing they're going to get the ball to open the second half. But this could be a huge play momentum-wise for Mount St. Joseph if they can stop them should Rose Holman go for the touchdown. So they, if they do opt to go for it, are you expecting what you thought you were going to see on third and goal with the direct snap to Roberta? Is that your best play call? I go that or I go to I go to a jet sweep to Hobbs or Heary and let them, let them do, their, do their dirty work out in space on the edges. Do you even consider... Some type of throw to Tyce Salou, especially no, with the type of matchup. No, I, I do not throw it here. I don't take that. I don't take that chance. But again, that's why I'm up here, <laughs> not down there coaching. I guess we will see. Oh, looks like they're going to kick it. They're not even going to run an offensive play. They'll try and take the three points. And th this is like an extra point, which they have blocked one. Has Mount St. Joseph today. Kyle Rayberg, the sophomore. Number 17, Kyle Ryder, the 
Seven of 11 on field goals this year. It'll be an 18 yard attempt. Trying to end the first half with some points and the kick is up and it splits the uprights and good. Your halftime score, 20 to 16. Mount St. Joseph on their home turf on senior day trying to capture a conference championship. They lead the fighting engineers by four heading to the locker room. What a first half, man. It's, it's all that we expected and more, and it's going to be a rock fight the rest of the way. Uh, it, it's going to come down to the last possession, and it's going to be exciting. And, hey, we got a special halftime guest today. We sure do. He's a pretty prominent figure, I think, yeah, yeah. In, in this conference. Hey, especially helpful for us, too. Yeah. And you'll get a chance to talk to him when we come back. We're teasing it. Yes, yes <laughs> we are. When we come back, we'll have a special guest. 20-16, to 16, our halftime score in the HCAC Game of the Week on HCAC.TV, powered to you by Indiana SRN. There is only one In 1926, the Sisters of Charity created the first BSN program here at Mount St. Joseph University. The nursing major is special because it's supported by our other liberal arts programs and departments. Our success is their success. They really cheer for us. We are very close and we all support each other and we're also supported by other majors around campus and they kind of like recognize the difficulty of our classes and they support us in those. Even though our program is small, we are still very innovative and creative in our thinking, our strategic planning, and our actions. We're very student focused and education focused. As a student, I had an experience where I struggled on a test and then on the next test I did extremely well and my professor called me aside and she said, I'm so proud of you, you did so well, and I just don't think that's an experience you would have at another school or in a larger setting. The benefits of our BSM program is our 100% employment rate. Over the past four years, our students who graduate from this program have first-time licensure pass rates well above the national average. And when you go out in the community and we're in our clinical settings, they know the name of Mount St. Joseph University and the type of nurses that it brings. Back at Schuler Field at the halftime score, Mount St. Joseph 20, Rose Holman 16 for the conference championship. And joining us now is the commissioner of the Heartland Collegiate Athletic Conference, Jay Jones. Jay, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for being here, and thank you for allowing me to join you. But as I said, uh, more importantly, just thanks for all the work you all do all season and for being here today. And, uh, boy, we picked the right game uh, to end the season, didn't we? It, it is a doozy so far, and I think it's going to get better. I would be remiss if I didn't pull a Keith Myers and, and stick with your with your statement and talk about the relationship between Indian SRN yeah. and the Heartland Conference. It's been fantastic for us, I know. Yeah, I appreciate that, and it's been fantastic for the Heartland Conference as well. You know, it started last year with our Game of the Week in football, but very quickly um, our school saw the quality of production that you all – uh, put put forth and the love and care that you all give the the Heartland Conference and so we quickly wanted to add in some other sports and some other championships we were able to do that um, last winter and, and a little bit in the spring and and then this year uh, we are doing most all of our team championships on on SRN and uh, really have it have it going uh, in a, such a positive direction and it's it's great for our student athletes and their families and others uh, around the country to be able to to watch in when they can't come out to the game. We we took a deep breath after last weekend because we were everywhere. We were we were at Hanover for football. We were at Hanover for soccer. We had volleyball. Um, I think it was women's soccer that was at Hanover. Yeah. And so and so I was at uh, women's soccer at Hanover, and then they had the football game uh, with with Rose as well, and that was a good game. Uh, and then uh, men's soccer were over at Rose Holman. So. So the relationship, how did it kind of uh, – I'm interested to know this, to be quite honest with you. How did the relationship even start? Yeah, um, so in all honesty, uh, Keith Myers gets a, a lot of the credit and Jerry Collins. The, those gentlemen came to me and said, look, we, we like what we see in football. We, we want to maybe do a game of the week. And, and from my standpoint, um, we have eight of our ten schools that play football, but we also have um, highly competitive volleyball in this league. And the two schools that um, are tremendously – 
good right now in volleyball. We've got really about four four schools playing really good volleyball, and two of those were two of our non-football schools. So I said, look, can we can we get a little broader base than just football? And it's worked out that way. And so volleyball was our next uh, next sport that we looked at, and um, you know, it, it really I, I think. Um, when you're working at the Division three level, the small college level, um, it takes a lot of understanding and um, just great crews at SRN understanding that, look, our schools have one SID covering all the sports. They have, mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm our office at the conference office is myself and, and an associate commissioner, and, and we both work hard, um, but there's only so many hours in a day. And so it takes a special personal relationship with someone like Indiana SRN that can come in and say, look, We'll be a part of your team with you. We'll help you, and and that's really what it's what it's been and how it's worked. I have to I have to give a shout out to the SIDs as you mentioned. <laughs> I mean, Blake here at Mount St. Joseph, Kevin Lanky at Rose, Ashley Birchmar. I mean, we go on and on. They have been an unbelievable help to us in preparing to put on uh, the broadcast. I know uh, Jarrett and I got to go to Transy last year for girls basketball. Beautiful campus. They treated us fantastically. It it's really fun to go to all these different environments and see not just the the kids getting on TV, but the quality of play I think is a lot of better than people would think. Yeah, you know, only about 6 to 7% of all high school athletes are able to go on and play in college. So when you think about that, um, what you realize pretty quickly is, look, the level of play in Division III um, is certainly very, very high, and people don't necessarily always have a chance to see that. If they have a Division III athlete in their family, I think they get that exposure. Um, but but once you get that exposure, you realize the, the level of play is really high. The other thing, and you mentioned our, our SIDs, and so I'll give a personal thanks to them as well. Um, they are just some of the hardest working people in all of college sport. Mm -hmm. And um, we couldn't do it without them. And I look out, and I was, I was riding over to the game today with our officiating assigner, and I just said, you know, our athletic trainers and our SIDs and, and people in those roles – in this environment, in this economy that we're in, most of them could go out and, and make more money doing something else. Mm -hmm. They're here. You know, we talk a lot in Division Three about the students playing for the love, but there are so many people that make it happen day to day on campuses that are that are doing what they do because they love these kids. And um, so, so a special thanks to all those folks. I can tell you, the Rose Holman trainers tape a very tight ankle. Yes, <laughs> I, you know what? I, I caught that, um, and I noticed that, and and that's good. That's good. So I we did I. I we were coming up after getting the walking tacos here at Mount St. Joseph, which are fabulous. They and were a fabulous. I had one of those. Yeah, myself. Jared stopped. Uh, Jared was stopped, and and a gentleman said, "Just thank you." Oh, he very said, nice. "You know, I, I don't get a chance to, to see all the games, but I want to see my kids and play." And he said, "We were a blessing," and that meant the world to us. Yeah. To to think, you know, for, for us, it really is about the students and the student athletes and getting them on TV because. I mean, you look, Rose Holman's got kids from 24 different states. They're not going to be able to – parents aren't going to be able to travel to see them, yet they're getting to watch their conference championship. Absolutely, and I, I greatly appreciate the level of, of the broadcast that you do and just the work. And, and again, I, I would say the same, Jerry, Keith, your entire team. Um, you asked how the relationship came together. There's been a lot of giving by SRN to to the Heartland Conference. It's, it's one of those things where – um, we kind of get each other, and, and uh, you know, they're able to, to do it at a level where we can afford to, to work with you all and really appreciate the advertisers and everyone making that possible. And um, so that's great. Actually, it warms my heart to hear me say, to hear you say that about the parent as well because as a commissioner, um, especially at this level, but at any level, you make decisions every day, and you, you have to decide where do, we, where do we put our resources, what do we want to do um, that helps our students and their families, and, and SRN has been such a gift uh, for us as well. So, I, I know Coach would love to, people to email him, coach at indianasrn.org, if they want to help out, but they could probably also contact you as well. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and, you know, one of the things I always say at our officiating meetings, and, and there's officials, um, you know, they're all working other jobs at, and uh, they're all doing other things. And I always say, you know, a league is an interesting thing compared to an institution because I work with 10 schools around the, the Midwest. And so there's a lot of our relationships with companies that, um, you know, it just makes sense. We, they, we have a, a regional reach um, and we work with 10 universities. And so, yeah, if those people are interested, my information can be found on, on uh, heartlandconference.org or heartlandconf.org, I should say. And, uh, it's all right there, and we we try our best just to be available, and, and certainly would, would appreciate anyone's help. 
Yeah, it's been, it's been a tremendous experience for us. And all, all, just all the different moving pieces that we've gotten to see as broadcasters between, you know, the field workers and the athletic trainers and, and the SIDs and, and the, the conference office. It, it's just been a, it really has, you know, taking what that gentleman said to us, it's really been a blessing for us. And I know it's been a pleasure to do this, and, and we hope to continue it throughout the winter season. But uh, right now we got a whale of a game on our, on our hands. <laughs> Boy, do we ever. And, and you know, I, I was at the same game last year, and I, I've been watching this one build all year long. And it was pretty obvious that, you know, it looked like these two teams were going to come down to – to the last game of the season again, and and boy, I heard you say as I walked into the booth that it'll come down to the last possession, and I can't disagree with that. It is, it is an absolute barn burner here, and and uh, you know I I think um, the weather. Uh, it was interesting last weekend with soccer. I don't like wind because wind <laughs> yeah. is is going to blow yeah. in one or or multiple directions, right? But um, the weather here today, both of these offenses have, are having to adjust a little bit of who they are, um, and so we're seeing that play out and. And these two coaches, I, I want to say too, if you're at home watching and your and your sons are playing for either of these men, um, they're men that that my sons, I'd, I'd be fine with my sons mm -hmm. playing for them as well. But I'm watching today, and I just enjoy uh, their minds and and seeing what they've done and some adjustments they've made, and uh, it's really really fun game to watch. And they look forward to the the cookies or brownies they get from Debbie Myers, yeah, the player of the game. Absolutely. And uh you appreciate Debbie Myers doing that and and uh we gosh, might, we might good, let you steal one before. Good, good luck. Well, <laughs> you know, I've, I've had plenty to eat. I I found those walking tacos. Good luck though figuring out who's the player of the game today. Oh, it, that, it's going to come down <laughs> to the wire. I know that for sure. I'm glad I don't have to make that decision. I'll be on the field. We're going to um, present a trophy post game and uh one of these teams, two teams is going to be the, the conference champion at the end of this and go on to play in the NCAA, and that's exciting as well because they're going to represent the Heartland Conference really, really well. In fact, both of these teams are good enough to play in the postseason, and that's the shame of, of kind of the the arrangement. I don't believe we'll get two bids. Uh, we typically do not, but, um, but, boy, I wish we would this year because both of these teams uh, could – certainly do some damage uh, in the NCAA postseason. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Jay. We really appreciate it. Thank you for, for all the, the assistance and, and allowing us to come do this. It's been an absolute pleasure, and uh, we look forward to seeing you down the road. Yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate you all and look forward to it. I guess this ends our fall today uh, yeah. with SRM, but certainly we're going to do some stuff in the winter and the spring and really appreciate you all. And So thank you, and thanks to the viewers out there for – tuning in and supporting uh, HCAC Athletics. That'll do it for the Halftime Show. We'll come back. We'll have some first half recap. And once again, it is Mount St. Joseph 20, Rose Home and 16 for the HCAC Championship here from Cincinnati. Joseph with the lead in the locker room up 20 to 16 over Rolls Holman. The winner of this game wins the HCAC championship and will punch a berth into the Division III playoff tournament. Rolls Holman was there last year. They won this conference championship last year with a victory 58 to 21. But right now, Mount St. Joseph with their running game, I think has kind of been a little bit of the difference. The turnovers have been fairly even, and we mentioned how important special teams was, but the running game between Beecham Jr. and Taylor has been terrific for MSJ. It has, and I think it's a huge momentum boost, too, knowing Rose Holman's going to start the second half of the football to hold them to a field goal when they had first and goal. And, uh, you know, the Mount has done a great job defensively. They got a turnover on downs when they stopped Rose Holman on fourth and one. Not something you really expect, but their defense has really played well today. And uh, like I talked about with Jay Jones, it, this, this I got a feeling is going to come down to the last minute, and I am 100% in on that. Me too. I'll take that all day long. By the way, quick update, victory bell game. Last we saw, Hanover is up at Franklin 17-0. Kind of a statement made yeah, early. Yeah, Franklin came into Hanover last year when we had the game and took the victory bell with him. Hanover's trying to get it back on Franklin's turf. That was a very good game last year to cap off our fall season in the game of the week on Indiana SRN. The rushing numbers in the first half between Taylor and Beecham combined. They have 16 carries and 130 yards and two of the touchdowns scored for the Lions. On the other side, really the hot topic has been Adam Tice Salu, who has eight catches for 97 yards. So he has eight of the 13 completions 
from Robertson. One way to look at it is the Lions could really try to bring a safety over perhaps and just keep a closer eye on him to prevent him from making those big plays. But then again, also, you got to worry about Hobbs and you got to worry about Hury, who those two combined so far have five catches for just 24 yards. I think Rick Thompson, the defensive coordinator for Mount St. Joseph, would tip his cap if Rose Holman can beat them, getting Adam Tice to lose the ball while they're shutting down Hobbs and Hury because that's – that's the main goal. Those are your big play guys. If you have to go short to Ty Salou to work your way down the field, that's fine. Again, tip my cap. All right, you beat us. But we're not going to let those big play guys get behind our defense and change the momentum of the game. And on the other side of the offense, running the football, Roberta has a very quiet 19 rushes, which is a number that surprised me for 58 yards. So the running game has been there for for Rose Holman, but uh, it's been Ty Salou making a, a statement in that first half with eight catches, and surely we'll, we'll see Hobbs and Harry, I think start to make some more plays in the second half. They're going to need to. Hey, I do, and one of the things I think we haven't talked about yet that's been underrated in this game is the escapability of Josh Taylor, the runs that he's made making people miss, especially on that long touchdown run, has been fantastic for um, them, as we can see. This is the touchdown run, and we picked up the top speed for Taylor at 14.6. We were interested to see what Hury had gotten up to on his kickoff, kickoff return. return. We've seen oh, as much as 19 miles an hour. shall receive. Thanks to our producer, Nick, for putting this all together. He gets beyond the kicker and down the sideline. He just slightly almost got to 19 miles an hour, but that's still uh, pretty fast. It, it, it is, and you think about it, too. Of, of the, well, let's see, two touchdowns that Rose Holman scored, one was a kickoff return, so... The Mount St. Joseph defense has held the Rose Holman offense to one offensive touchdown in, in that first half. you got to love that if you're Coach Hop, but you know Coach Sokol and the uh, fighting engineers are coming out for blood here in the second half. Both teams are now starting to make their way back out into the field, get warmed up for this second half of play. 30 minutes left to decide this one to crown a champion in the HCAC. A four-point lead for the Lions on their home turf. We'll step aside and bring you second half action when we return on Indiana SRN. Every person has a story waiting to be told. Mr. Jack comes in every Monday. Yeah, that's right. One day I noticed his hat said he was a Korean War veteran. I asked him if he'd ever been to the Korean War Memorial. No, I never had a chance to go. That was the day I knew we had to do whatever it took to get him there. Man, he made it happen. I got to go to Washington, D.C. to all the memorials. The World War II Memorial, Naval Memorial, Korean War Memorial. Took all kind of pictures and everything, and it was a good trip. Too. I'm glad that I could be a part of Mr. Jack's story. We encourage you to follow us on Twitter at Indiana SRN. Find upcoming games, video highlights, and much more. Follow us now at Indiana SRN. We encourage you to follow us on Twitter at Indiana SRN. Find upcoming games, video highlights, and much more. Follow us now at Indiana SRN. Myers, Vice President of Indiana SRN. Thanks for joining us. You know Indiana SRN broadcasts 350 games a year. All sorts of sports. Yeah, we do. Hard to believe, isn't it? Indiana SRN loves to put student athletes first on our website. If you're a business out there, we probably could help you too. Contact us at coach at indianasr.org. Grandma from out of state thanks you. Mom and dad who can't get to the game thanks you as well. In fact, our athletes watch the games over and over again. Our military has enjoyed the games as well. So sit back and enjoy the game. It's Indiana SRN. Indiana SRN here in Cincinnati, Ohio. 
Mount St. Joseph leads 20 to 16 over Rolls Holman second half just moments away with Sean Kroll. I'm Jarrett Lewis. Thanks for tuning in on HCAC.tv. We will crown a champion in this conference when all is said and done. 30 minutes left to decide that one. Rolls Holman has gotten the better end of Mount St. Joseph in the last three matchups between these two. Mount St. Joseph actually leads the all-time series 11 games to 9, and they're trying to extend that, make it 12 to 9. Right now with their four-point lead, they will kick things off from right to left. Back to Rolls-Holman. A lot on the line in this one. Of course, the conference championship, but Mount St. Joseph trying to finish the season undefeated, something they haven't done since 2004. And they're trying to make it to the Division Three tournament, something they have not done also since 2009. So a lot of streaks on the line that the Lions are trying to break. Farsing has things teed up at the 35, a trickling kick. Fielded on the far side and just sliding down, setting up the offense. At the 29-yard line is Lance Shelton. Some first-half numbers for the Fighting Engineers. Robertson was 13 of 18 for... 121 yards, did have those two interceptions, however. Ty Salil leading the way in the receiving category. Eight catches for 97 yards, and Roperta with a lot of workload. 19 carries for 58 yards and a score. First play is to Roperta up the middle, and it's only good for two yards. Two on the play to the 31-yard line. Across the Second 30 to the 31. We had a very steady snow before the game, before kickoff. And that has died down. This pass overshooting everybody going to Tice Salou. So it'll bring up third down and eight for Rose Holman. The field was completely covered in snow when we first got here. And a great job by the staff of Mount St. Joseph getting the yard lines cleared up first and then the boundaries and then the hash marks and now for the most part the snow kind of becoming a non-factor. A draw to Roperta. Tackled down, not going to reach the first down as he only got it just past the 35 yard line. Fourth down and four and here comes the punting unit for the Fighting Engineers. Beecham comes out, and he'll be the return man back for MSJ. Into the game to punt for the engineers is number zero, Andrew Toller. The punter is Andrew Toller, the junior from Bidwell, Ohio. He stands with his heels at the 20. <laughs> How was your trip? It was good. <laughs> Beecham, he picks it up, across the 30, and trots out of bounds at the 38-yard line. Good to have you back. Thank you. you got to love the fact that Mount St. Joseph stopped them for a field goal at the end of the first half, made him punt. Still catching my breath, sorry. It's a good way to start the third quarter. <laughs> the drive or the running? Both, I guess. Oh, by the way, uh, it's overtime, and Purdue is up on Illinois. Overtime? Just wanted to. Isn't it? No, I got it in the fourth quarter. Thank you. I appreciate that, though. Oh, well, then the ESPN notification was uh, tripping me out. Here oh. goes Beecham. Across midfield, down the near sideline, and pushed out of bounds, crossing the 40. A huge run for Beecham, his longest of the game and the Lions into Rolls Holman territory. Other scores halftime Anderson 16 Manchester 6. I got a feeling we're going to see a lot of Beecham Jr. here in the second half for the Lions. New set of downs at the 40 yard line. Taylor kept his eyes downfield but now will step up 
and pick up some more yards with his legs. Positive yardage though. I mean, nice, nice coverage by Rose Holman there, forcing him to pull the ball down and run, but keep a decent second down yardage. I kid you not. ESPN told me that it was end of regulation between oh, Purdue and awesome. Illinois. So I, I don't, I don't want any more reminders. I'm now you, you have a whole quarter to uh, yeah. try and prepare yourself for how that game could end. No, oh, trust me, I know how it's going to end. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor, another run. Third down and manageable upcoming. But I do bet we could go in and Notre Dame and beat him. I mean, if Marshall can, we can. Hey. Oh. Anyway, listen. focus on this one. Here we go. Listen. This is a big drive for Rose Holman's defense. If, even if Mount St. Joseph can get a field goal, that's still a one touchdown. I mean, you still got to get a touchdown to tie him. Possessions start to matter just a little bit more. Now that we're in this second half, a delayed blitz. Beecham was the intended target, but it's swatted at the line of scrimmage. A heck of a defensive play made by Devin Cobb. I can't believe, honestly, I can't believe they threw it. As well as they've run the ball lately. Well, it looks like they're going to go for it. We'll see Cobb again on the replay. His right hand. Timed it perfectly. Offense is still out there. Rolls Holman. Five guys on the line of scrimmage, a couple of them standing up. If you run, I think you got to run wide. Taylor's going to throw. Finds Beecham Jr. again. Pretty similar play. It may have been the exact same play, and this time they do find the connection. Yeah, Kaiser Bone was coming in looking to put a lick on Taylor, but he got rid of the ball quick enough. Able to get it back to Beecham, and I think you're, that is the exact same play. As you see Bone coming in. Nice block there on the outside, too, by Porter Jr. Beecham Jr., of course, a terrific runner, but probably one of the best options as a safety net out of the backfield for your quarterback. At the 24, Taylor. A long throw, and he just sails it over the head of Newton. Newton's had a quiet game. Their leading receiver but just has one catch to his credit. He hit, he, hit the chain, he hit the chain gang in stride, though. Nice catch. Got out of bounds. It was good. That's a good play, though, by Taylor. He saw the coverage was tight. You know what? Just zip it out of bounds, and we'll try it again on second down. But they will try again. Powell just offset left of the formation they go beach him up the middle and he's hounded getting off his block and making the stop is Walkowski you know Jen I'm still, still surprised when you watch Rose Holman line up defensively they put a lot of guys in the box for Beecham and they got the DBs out wide there's one guy in the middle of the field and yet Mount St. Joseph doesn't seem to go there very often it's really surprising like even a short little crosser could probably gain a big chunk of yardage. Officials stop the clock for a moment to get the football set. It's third down and eight. Taylor will bring Beecham up to line of scrimmage and has three receivers to his right. Empty backfield, just a four-man rush. Taylor over the middle of the field. Newton off of his hands, and he took a lick afterwards, and that's well, actually going to draw flag. a flag. Yeah, at the goal line. I wonder maybe there's holding on, an, on the other receiver out there wide. That's a huge penalty if that's on Rose Holman. A well-thrown ball on a line from Taylor, and it's off the hands of Newton, but he took – the worst end of it afterwards. Let's see what the white hat says. Newton is up and moving. You see him right there. It's a lengthy discussion, too, between the referees, and we'll finally get a call. Oh, wow. 
They've ejected 24. They call the targeting. Rashard Brown. I wonder if it's because he he went up to Newton's head and hit him. That is unbelievably huge, and Coach Sokol is not happy at all with that call. Brown was the one who made that terrific play in this end zone where he tipped it and got the interception for his teammate Amonqua. So now Brown is out for the rest of this game. Another look at it. I, I can see how they would call that. Just hit him right in the head. You cannot do that. Wow. Good to see Newton is up yes. and moving. Currently he's on the sideline. So they'll check him out, make sure he's all right for the rest of this game. Four receiver set and a first down at the 11. Taylor pointing out a would-be blitzer in Bowen. Bowen does not blitz. Taylor towards the outside. The reception made. The Ayler, yeah. Decent pickup for Jake Ayler, the senior receiver who has also had a quiet game. That's his first catch. In the passing game as a whole, Taylor currently is just 10 of 25. Ayler, the senior from Milford, Ohio. We saw him in the pregame ceremony with his family. Can they get a first down without a touchdown? It looks like it. They get to the half-yard line. Taylor stays patient, finds the hole, and bursts through into the end zone for the second time is the quarterback, Josh Taylor. Wow, that penalty looms large in this game, Jared, because it gave Mount St. Joseph new life. They would have had fourth and long, and it would have been a long field goal. Instead, they stick in the end zone on this quarterback keeper. And... I don't know about you, but Captain Moe, I think, is on the side of the Lions right now. Taylor, all the confidence in the world. His run game has made a huge difference. His two scores make it a two-possession ball game. Extra point is up, and it is good. 27-16, to 16, Mount St. Joseph leads Rolls-Holman. or moving project has arrived and college hunks hauling junk and moving has you covered honest uniform nice knowledgeable service college hunks hauling junk and moving can't get to a computer? Then we've got you covered. Just go to the Indiana SRN app and stay up to date with all of your favorite teams. You can watch live coverage or relive the experience with our on-demand service. Schuler Field is now rocking. It's the largest lead of the game for either team. Mount St. Joseph up 11 on the visiting Fighting Engineers. This is off the hands of Hury, and he picks it up. He's going to turn it into something. Again, some more ability with the football. Hury, whenever he has it, is always dangerous. In, in, in discussing the targeting rule, one of the things to keep note is, and I, I believe that's why they called it, he left his feet. You can't launch yourself, especially uh, in, in the head and neck area, which, you know, player safety is always paramount in, in this, Jarrett. So kudos to the officials for that call. Rolls Holman trying to respond. It's a good way to start with Roperta up the middle. He's been their workhorse, and he has a seven yard gain on first down. Rose Holman knows they can score and score quickly, so they're not going to deviate too much from what they normally do. 
Call it six yards for Grant and hurrying up to the line. They snap it with 25 on the play clock and it's a pass that's off the hands of Tice Salou. Well, they were both fighting for position right there, but it was just behind Ty Salou. And Ty Salou's been the go-to guy today. The reason is Mount St. Joseph has taken away Hobbs and Heary on the offensive end. Ty Salou has eight catches, but about 12 targets at least. And he's back at the top of the screen. Heary the man in motion. They fake it to him. Robertson will keep it, and he is stopped. Just a one-yard gain. Tackle made by Nick Paff. We've called his name a couple of times. The freshman. Great read by the freshman. He saw that coming all the way. Stayed with Robertson and made the tackle. Thought they were going to go with a little razzle-dazzle, and he just shot up in that gap. Looked like you saw some miscommunication amongst the offensive linemen. Kenneth Gibson. And one of his teammates alongside of him. Kind of confused and... Kind of looking around at each other. Devlin Spradlin also. Boy, that was a lollipop of a <laughs> hike back. A good rolls home and bounce picked up. Beecham trying to find some running room, reverses course, and has it out to the 33. Boy, he had to run up and get that because it looked like it hit one of the guys coming down to block for him. But once it hits Mount St. Joseph player, it is a free ball. So very smart play there by Beecham. On the play for the Could you see there if it hit somebody? It looked like it did from our angle. Like big, I didn't ki catch enough of it on the replay. Big, big series for the Rose Holman defense. And nearly hit someone. It may have been Porter Jr. trying to clear out space. But a huge score to start the quarter and then a stop made by the Lions. They get the ball back with the 11-point lead. Now the en now the enemy as we're getting there for Rolls Holman the enemy is the clock. If Mount St. Joseph can grind out first downs on the ground and keep that clock rolling, that is a huge deterrent for Rose Holman. They're not necessarily going to abandon the passing game, but mm -hmm. with how good the running game is, they are going to keep at it. Are the Lions? Second and seven. They will pass it right here with Taylor. Coming back to his left, and he's got nowhere to go. Tackled for a huge loss, a six-yard sack. Riley Roberts. Now you're in third and long, and Rose Holman's feeling pretty good now about getting the defense off the field and putting their offense right back on it. That's the first sack from the Rolls-Holman defense today. And it sets up third down and 13. Roberts got his leg and hung on for dear life. Passing situation here through receivers towards the top. Taylor not on the same page and it lobs into the hands, oh, intercepted man. by Rolls-Holman's Ty Miller. That is the last thing you wanted and again, they keep going to the edges. I don't understand why they're not going to the middle of the field, but again, I'm not a coach. Double coverage there, miscommunication, and that's better than a punt if you're Rose Holman. Porter Jr. stopped on the route, you can see there, and him and Taylor were not on the same page. So who's going to rise up and make a play on both sides of the ball here now? Ty Salou switches sides of the field. He is near side, but they begin things with Raperta, who finds a hole, kind of chops his feet forward, and near midfield has a first down. I don't know if you're old enough to remember when Keith Berman and uh, Jackson, Tom Jackson used to do the highlights after NFL games, and on a big run, Keith, I mean, they'd go boom, boom, boom. That's what I hear when Raperta runs. Robertson looking to pass, airing it out down the field to Hurry, and no flag called. Oh, they looked, the ref, the, great job by the back judge and the judge on the outside. They looked at each other to make sure, okay, that was a good play, because at the last minute he put his hands up to block the pass. 
the defender you can see is Donaworth. And Rose Holman's probably arguing that Donaworth didn't turn back for the football. Jeff Sokol ran about 40 yards down the field towards the referees looking for an explanation. And I think what they're saying is as he put his hands up, he hit the ball. Could be a very important play that we will take note of depending on how this game ends up going. Two-yard carry for Roperta. Here's third down and eight right at the 50. Anthony Wright with the tackle there. And, boy, line change for the defense. I was about to say, yeah. mass substitutions. Some of the usual suspects right there in the middle of that defense, including Hammond. And he switches sides. Robertson. Oh, ball, Set. ball out. Football is loose. It's on the turf, and it looks like the Lions have it. They do. Oh, that's a huge play. Another turnover forced from the Lions defense. Just as he was cocking the ball back to throw it, he got hit and the ball popped out. It's the third turnover. Twice Robertson has been picked off, and here he gets hit and loses the football. And Stevenson was the one who got to him. The junior from Sycamore High School right here in Cincinnati. Huge play for the Lions. So now after the Taylor interception, it looks like the fumble was picked up by Brady Bueller. Taylor and the rest of the offense are back out there. Slant, dangerous pass, trying to get it to Porter Jr. You know, it's interesting, Jared. We talked, we talked almost exclusively about both offenses coming into this game. I have been extremely impressed with Mount St. Joseph's defense and the way they've handled that high-powered offense of the Fighting Engineers. This Mount St. Joseph defense. Of course, number one and number two for both of these teams in offense and defense in the conference. Snap is to Beecham. He keeps it, switches hands a couple of times. A flag comes in after Beecham only got three. Taking it into the Mount St. Joe sidelines. You don't want to do that. A little extracurricular. Got a feeling it's probably going to be holding, considering where the flag came from. Yeah, it was thrown during the play. You saw it come flying in as Beecham got near the sideline. Mount St. Joseph gives up 24 and a half points to their opponents. They're keeping Rose Holman under that mark. That's good enough for second in the conference behind only Rose who gives up 20. I think they called that on Cooper Jones, the tight end maybe. Second down and 19 for the Lions from there. Well, the penalty pushes him back to the 50-yard line, and now it's second down and 19. Watch oh. Beecham. If he's not picking up a blitzer, he's going to go out and, and on a route. Four-man rush, clean pocket, Taylor, and in, making the extension for the catch is Austin Brock. Probably not as much yardage as you want considering that was second down. Now you still have third and long. It's only a four-yard pickup, third and 15. Both teams really kind of exchanging mistakes, whether it be a turnover or the penalties, have kind of halted a lot of these drives. Magnitude of this game. Man-to-man -man coverage on the near side. That's where Taylor is looking towards. And now he's forced to step up again, but he can't escape flag. the wrath as there is a flag down, getting the sack for Rolls Holman was Tyler Smith. That's definitely a covered sack, but I think this is going to be on Mount St. Joseph and they'll punt. You can see some of the fight engineers coaches already explaining they will decline the penalty after the sack. So back-to-back -back turnovers and neither team can capitalize off of them. Much better job this half by Rose Holman of getting pressure on Josh Taylor and, and taking him down behind the line of scrimmage, something they didn't do really at all in the first half. 
Also give credit to Jake Ovenick for getting in there. Here's where special teams comes in. You got those two weapons waiting for the punt. The snap pushes back Murray and it's fielded by Huri, who's the up man. And he gets wrangled down just at the 23 yard line. So, Rose kind of shooting themselves in the foot a little bit, but again, the Lions, even with this 11 point lead, they've had opportunities to extend it. Yeah, haven't been able to take advantage. Quick hitter, Hury has the catch, spins out of a tackle, here he goes. Down the sideline, kind of looks like the return he had for a touchdown earlier, and he escapes the final line of defense and reaches the end zone. Daniel Hury goes 76 yards for the score. You can't keep giving a team like this chances when you've got when you've got to step on their throat when you've got them down, just like the Undertaker, the WWE, he rose, they're rising up again, and big, big play. Almost caught him for a short game, but he wiggled out of the tackle, and uh-oh, there she goes. And there is the blocking up front by Hobbs. Just had the one man to escape, and he does second touchdown of the game for Huey. The extra point is up and through. Back to a four-point game. Rose Holman not going away quietly. We still got a long way to go. You're good at making big announcements. We're good at your insurance. Start with Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance, online, over the phone, or in person, and stop knocking on wood. We encourage you to follow us on Twitter, at IndianaSRN. Find upcoming games, video highlights, and much more. Follow us now, at IndianaSRN. We encourage you to follow us on Twitter, at IndianaSRN. Find upcoming games, video highlights, and much more. Follow us now at Indiana SRA. Rose Hellman strikes fast after stopping Mount St. Joseph. They get it to one of their playmakers in space. And it got real quiet real quick up in here with that big play. And Kick off back to Beecham at the eight. Starts in the middle of the field, now works his way towards the left. Good kickoff coverage from Rolls Holman. Only out to the 22 yard line goes Beecham. Now, what can Josh Taylor and the Lions do offensively? They've sputtered out their first couple of drives here in the second half. Yeah, we kind of easily forget about what their first possession of the quarter looked like and how impressive that was. But ever since then, the offense has sputtered, and they have a long field ahead of them. Up the middle is Beecham. Short gain, just one yard on the first down play. <laughs> we, we are right next to some of the coaches' booths, and it is intense. It has gotten here. to that point of the game. Beecham will be the one to take the snap. Taylor is still back there in the backfield. But a conference championship is on the line, Jarrett. Can understand the magnitude and the emotion. Beecham goes up the middle. This will set up a third down and four. Caleb Corral, the offensive coordinator for Mount St. Joseph. This is sixth year. They've averaged 37.2 points per game his first five years. I think that's pretty good. That is pretty good. Third and four. What do we have from the offense of the mount? Taylor pointing out a would-be blitzer. 
And he does come. Picked up by Powell. Back shoulder to Porter Jr. Does he have the catch? Did he catch, catch that? No, it's incomplete. He nearly had the reception, but good coverage to may have rip it out of there. On the coverage was Dorsey. I'd love to know what Mount St. Joseph offensively sees on the edges to not go into the middle of the field at all. Yeah, some of those back shoulder plays have been there, but yeah, like you said, Sean, the sideline has been guarded well by this Rose Holman secondary. Another high snap, but it is a punt that gets off the right foot of Murray. Trickles down to the 39-yard line. So what a potential swing we could have here after being up 11. Rose Holman gets the football back after the huge play by Huey and a chance to take the lead. Yeah, <laughs> crazy how this game goes. But I think we felt it all day, Jarrett, that this is going to come down to the very end, and I hope we can speak it into existence because I'm ready for it. Robertson will take the shotgun snap. A couple of pulling guards from the right to help out Roperta. Two-yard pickup for Grant. We discussed that Rose Holman isn't going to, to deviate much from who they are, especially now, one-score game. They're going to be themselves, and they're going to do what they need to do to drive the football down the field. That's up to Mount St. Joseph to stop them. Robertson will look to pass this time. Wanted the bubble route, but then was looking at Hobbs over the middle of the field, and it falls incomplete. He, he had a pass fake. I don't know if we have the replay or not. Robertson pass faked. I think he was expecting Hobbs to do a stop and go and get behind the defense, but Hobbs didn't read it, and so then he threw it to him across the middle. Nobody open for it. Robertson, and now another passing down. Grisick is in the slot. Ty Salio to the top. Let's. The blitz affects Robertson, and the pass may have been tipped at the line of scrimmage. The umpire did show it was tipped, but from the, from the outside, once again, the freshman, Nick Path, putting pressure on Rolls Holman. What a game for the freshman. Fourth down and eight from the 41 yard line. We've got to start making note of player of the game I know we can start potential there's so many people and it's still undecided yet it could be decided in the final drive <laughs> yes it could be I think I have a, a guy in mind he's made a couple of big plays so like a couple of guys in mind low line drive punt Beecham just stands at the 21 with the catch he's across the 30 now going backwards and Tackle down at the 28-yard line. Back and forth. They just keep switching. <laughs> All right. We get a stop. Now you get a stop. Now we get a stop. Once again, the split the pot winning ticket for... Halftime score was 20 to 16. So each team has scored one touchdown with the good PAT. Well, St. Joseph and the rest of the offense out there. Read option. Taylor on the keeper with a hole up the middle. It might come back. Umpire with the penalty marker down. A lot of flags in the second half. Didn't see hardly any in the first. These are well-coached teams. They are, of course, both towards the bottom in penalties. See if we can see any other scores here in the conference. Definitely want to keep our eye on that Franklin Hanover game and who's going to either hold on to that bell or take it right back. Defiance leads Bluffton 14 to 7 midway through the third quarter. Taylor looks. Has all day to throw, and now he's flushed out towards his right. Powell is his release man. Gets across the original line of scrimmage and then gets 
hit down low and falls forward to the 33. Making something out of nothing. Taylor again extending the play. Last update still 17-0. Hanover over Franklin. Second and five under 20 seconds. You'll take that after the penalty on first down. Boy, Powell is a large human being <laughs> with the football. On the ground. Beecham Jr. will have a new set of sticks when we enter the fourth and final quarter. The Lions still have the lead. Up four over Rolls Holman. A conference championship is on the line, and we have 15 more minutes to decide who is going to be champion of the HCAC. You're good at keeping the car clean. Good at your insurance. Start with Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance online, over the phone, or in person, and stop knocking on wood. So I stopped in at Chick fil A for lunch and saw Officer Wilson come in. I decided to place a dine in mobile order and have a cookie delivered to him just to show appreciation for his service for our community. A few minutes later, I noticed that Officer Wilson had gotten up and left, and I knew he hadn't gotten his cookie yet. And I'm headed to my car. I turn around and I see Allie, and she's running after me. Mr. Police Officer, Mr. Police Officer. <laughs> Usually, when someone yells Officer, Officer, they want to ask me about a ticket they got. I absolutely wanted the cookie. <laughs> this cookie is delicious. <laughs> Fourth quarter will get started. Mount St. Joseph has the football and the lead up four with Sean Kroll. I'm Jarrett Lewis, Indiana SRN, bringing you the HCAC game of the week in the regular season finale. Will it be the Lions or the Fighting Engineers, kings of the HCAC? Good way to start the quarter. Beecham out of the backfield. He is second on the team in receptions as their leading running back. Would have liked to have seen him stay in bounds there and keep the clock running. But you're moving the sticks, so you're happy with that. You're into Rolls-Holman territory at the 47. Not wasting much time. This time it's Beecham on the ground. Another first down. Two plays for the star running back. And two first down carries of 10-plus yards. What's the saying, you dance with the girl that brought you? Well, Taylor and Beecham are the ones that brought them, and they are dancing with them now in the fourth quarter. Although Beecham needs a little bit of a rest. Second back in there. Taylor looked like he was faking a quarterback run, but instead will sling it out. And the catch made by Hundley. Rose has done a good job of keeping Hunley contained, the big hitter for the Lions in the passing game. Mariano McKenzie, the one out there in the backfield. You at least want a field goal here if you're Mount St. Joseph because it keeps you ahead by a touchdown. They have to tie, score a touchdown to tie does Rose Holman. Taylor will keep it following the lead block of McKenzie. Two yards shy of a first down. Beecham comes trotting back out with the rest of the offense. Gary Powell III still out there in the tight end position. Again, 6'2", 230. Essentially another deep offensive lineman for the Lions. Not sure what the range is for Farfsing, but not sure if you're quite close enough to try a field goal if you don't pick up the first here. But Beecham on the carry. He only got one, but he needed two. Farfsing Long is 36, and he's 5 of 8 on the season. You're looking at probably about a 41-42 yarder. Offense is still out there. Offense peers over towards the sideline. Officially a fourth and two. Taylor trying to find some space. Moving forward, and they will have enough for the first. Yeah, that was, was a spot call there. Rose actually 
pointing and thinking they got the stop, but from our vantage point, it looks like enough, and the referee signal is just that. Just enough. And now with this new set of downs, you are in range if you do want to send Farfsing out there. And now the key is use as much of the clock as you can. They've already burned almost three minutes of this fourth quarter time. Taylor again is going to run it. Stay impatient finding that hole and tackled from behind. Uh, oh, he's got some. Ovanchik with quite the, the theatrics there when he got. I don't know if he was Tasked by sli Taylor. slipping, actually slipping, or if he was trying to sell it from Taylor. Nonetheless, second and six. Maybe Rose Holman needs to open a liberal arts wing now. <laughs> Taylor wants to throw it this time. Into the end zone, jump ball, and good defense there from uh, Monqua. The taller receiver is Zykeem Hunley at 6-1, unable to snag it down. He gets a little bit more under that football. I think Hunley can come down with that, considering the size advantage. Third down at six from the 19. Clean pocket for Taylor. Had some air underneath it. Two receivers both sides. High snap. Taylor sees an opening. He's going to have to take off. Wrapped up just shy of that first down. Tackled made by Kaiser Bowen. We've seen the red hair of Riley Roberts also flying around in the Rose Holbin defense. He's got some lettuce, that's for sure. Fourth and two. Oh, look, they're going to. Let's shoot the field goal to go for it here on fourth down. Are they going to actually run a play? They got trips stacked over here on the near side. They do. Take the snap. Taylor, wide open as Beecham out of the backfield. Far sideline, he dives. Is he in? Yes! Touchdown, Mount St. Joseph. What a play on fourth down. Just snuck right out of the backfield. We just alluded to it. The safety net that is Cornell Beecham Jr. out of the backfield. That's his fourth receiving touchdown this season. And it is a big one to extend the lead for the mount. Yeah, I think Bowen was spying Taylor and didn't get out in time in coverage for Beecham. And this PAT is huge because it means a field goal and a two-point conversion with a touchdown ties it for Rose Holman. Much better snap. The hold and the kick are both good. Back to an 11-point advantage for the home team. We are in the final stretch of this fourth quarter and this decisive championship game. Down to crunch time in the HCAC championship game. Mount St. Joseph puts together an impressive drive capped off by another touchdown for Beecham Jr. Shelton picks up 
A kickoff that trickles towards him. Price trying to bring him down, which he finally does after Shelton got to the 31. Surprise he didn't let that go through to either Fury or Hobbs, but at least they got decent field position. This is a big, big drive for the Royal Salmon offense, and you can see they're huddled around the sidelines there. Let's see what they come out with here to start. We'll check the penalty. Referee's mic isn't working, but it looked like offsides on the kickoff from Mount St. Joseph. So they'll move him up five yards, and now we'll begin this drive at the 36. A must-score drive situation, perhaps, for Rose. Fury in motion. Over the middle of the field, wide open is Hobbs. He takes a big shot into the back, but... Not after a huge pickup, almost a 20-yard catch 10, into Lions territory. Big chunk play you needed if you're the fighting engineers. And Hobbs, for the most part, has had a very quiet night. That's his fourth catch. Robertson with a little shimmy, and there's Shuri with the catch close to the sticks, but does haul it in right next to the sideline. Well, you'll take that all day if you're Rose Holm and Fury on a linebacker. Lucky the ball carried him out of bounds if you're Mount St. Joseph, or that could have been trouble. Wasting no time. They fake the run. Now Fury out in space, catches the bubble pass, breaks tackles. Fury is going to score a hat trick for number two in Rose Holman just like that with an answer. The two defenders for Mount St. Joseph took each other out on that play, and Huey just slipped right through him, and boy, oh boy, here we go again. The fighting engineers will not be denied. Huey slips between the two, and that's what he is. He's slippery. It looks like they're going to go for two here. Try to make it a field goal game. Daniel Heary has three of the four rolls home in touchdowns. So three receivers towards the top four. Robertson. Into the end zone. It's caught. Is he in? Yes. Ty Salia with a good two-point conversion. Does break the plane on the catch. And boy, oh boy, we got a three-point game. Just when you think you can breathe easy for the Lions. Uh-uh. At Morales Group Staffing, we are all about building better futures. And during these times, we are working hard to put people to work. We are now hiring for hundreds of jobs with pay up to $17 an hour. Visit our website at moralesgroup.net or text JOBS, J-O-B-S, to 317-472-7600 to apply now and get hired today. We encourage you to follow us on Twitter, at IndianaSRN. Find upcoming games, video highlights, and much more. Follow us now at Indiana SRN. Boy, hold on for the rest of this nine minutes and 40 seconds. This game just keeps on getting better and better. Once you think Mount St. Joseph can hold on to a double-digit lead, Rose Holman in the blink of an eye scores, and more often than not, it's Daniel Hurey. A couple of updated scores, eight minutes to go. Bluffton and Defiance tied at 14. Return for Beecham Jr. He breaks loose across the 50. 
He's going to get cut off and pushed out of bounds, but not after reaching the Rose Holman 40-yard line. A huge response on the kickoff return by Cornell Beecham Jr. Big play after big play. My goodness. I was about to say, too, that Hanover's up 24-3 on Franklin. Beecham Jr. silencing the critics. Coming out in a big way in this game. So many people to keep in consideration for player of the I game. I was going to say, I think Huey keeps trying to run away with it, but Beecham Jr. is saying, uh-uh. Why did they, they push him? Oh, they're saying he stepped out of bounds. Beecham Jr. knows how good Debbie Myers' brownies are. <laughs> The Lions going for it all down the sideline. He's got his man beat, and it's caught for a score. Wow. Touchdown reception <laughs> for Saikeem Hunley. But there is a flag down at the far side of the field. Far side of the field. There's one down at the 30-yard line. And it looks like it's coming back. And... Is that a hold again? No, they call it an eligible man downfield. Coach Opperton can't believe it. Boy, big play after big play keeps on happening. And how many times have we seen a big play from Mount St. Joseph yeah. that gets either called back? An illegal man downfield, man. It's just a five-yard penalty, but in the gates, another yeah. touchdown that would have made it a two-score game. You take points off the board, you do not like that. Hunley catches this one, but it's just a five-yard pickup, so they're back to the original line of scrimmage. At the nine-minute mark in this fourth quarter, here's a run for Beecham Jr. He has had a breakthrough in this second half. We'll set up third down and six. You've got to think they're going to go for it here if they don't get it. Still a little bit out of field goal range. Beecham Jr. keeping pace with his eight yards per carry mark, which he came into this game with. On third and six, they'll look to pass. Dangerous pass that gets tipped up and it falls incomplete. Well, he put it in a window. And the triple coverage, but still at the same time, Cam York had a chance to bring it down. And that was Cameron Dorsey who got the tip. My goodness. All right, fourth and six. This is fun, man, I'm telling you. <laughs> Taylor. Five yards behind the center. And now he keeps creeping up. They will run a play, look to pass. Throws it towards the corner. Newton has the catch. Was he in bounds? Yes. Oh, wow. What a fantastic throw by Josh Taylor and a better catch by Newton. That's only his second catch in the day. Is it it not? is. And he hadn't had a catch since the first quarter. He's in the slot on your replay. Oh, my goodness. But just a perfectly thrown ball and just enough to get that foot in. He Holy got that cow. left foot down. On fourth down, Newton comes up huge. Taylor into the end zone. Mount St. Joseph. <laughs> Back to a nine-point lead. Folks, if you don't think Division Three college football is legit, I submit to you this game because it is fantastic. Arguably the best game we've seen in the game of the week. Everything on the line. Josh Taylor... Putting this offense not necessarily on his back, but saying, hey, boys, let's go. Follow me. We'll get back into the end zone. Extra oh, point tipped. is tipped. So that'll keep it at a oh. nine-point advantage, which 
could be crucial as we enter the final 752 here in Cincinnati. 52 seconds remaining in the game. My name is Brittany. A little thing I love about the Egg White Grill is the toasty English muffin. It's toasted perfectly. It's just a little crispy, but not like hard crispy, but just crispy enough that when you bite into it, everything is perfect. <laughs> My name is Curtis, and I love the Egg White Grill because the egg itself, it's like soft and fluffy, like a pillow. I, and I, and I, I would eat my pillow, but I'd eat <laughs> the, the Chick-fil-A breakfast egg white sandwich for sure. They say nice guys don't finish first. So maybe it's time to reconsider what it means to be first. It's about being your best, but knowing you could be even better. It's being present, but respectful of history. You sure you want to make that move? It's donating something more valuable than money. It's believing in yourself and something bigger. It's coming from different families, but treating each other like brothers. It's not just being a man, it's being a mason. Back and forth, up and down. Here's the extra point. Try to see who got their hand on it. Slow motion replay. Oh, the jumper. A couple of guys in the middle of that mix. Oh, they kicked it deep. And oh. it's by Shelton. He touched it. Oh, I thought if he touched it. They ruled a touchback. You can see it got by Shelton. I, oh, yeah. I don't know. I must not know the rule then because I thought if you touched it in the field of play, you had to return it. Oh, maybe it didn't touch him. It was awfully close. Did not touch him? Boy, that was close. And luckily for Rose Holman, nothing drastic happens on that special teams unit, but... You're down nine. You have plenty of time. You've been able to score lightning fast. Referees appear to be having some sort of discussion amongst themselves. And now they're all in position, ready to go. Someone may have jumped for Mount St. Joseph. No flag thrown. Hobbs on the slant route has the completion. And again, not only is Rose Holman up against the school board, they're up against the clock. Just now at the halfway part, of this fourth quarter. Roperta keeps the legs churning forward for maybe three. A big time third and two in the face of Rose Holman. I would imagine they'll go to Ripperta again. He's in the backfield on the left of Robertson. They do give it to him. He has a first down and more at the 45-yard line, wrangled up at the legs by Price. Big time run by the big back of Roperta. Big time players make big time plays, and that low center gravity just keeps it rolling. Now six and a half minutes. Robertson. This one down the sideline, and it's fighting for it. Tice Salou along with Starks. See, if that would have been Illinois defense, they would have called a pass interference on that play. Uh, I see someone's kind of salty. I'm, I'm an Illinois fan. What else do you expect? That's all I have to live for. We have the rest of this game to live for. That is true. That is true. Second down and 10, back to the running game, collapsing down, Ooh. suffocating defense, nowhere to go for Roberta. That front four of Buller, Tucker, Hammond, and Brophy have been tremendous today. The freshman again, Paff, he got in on the mix. On the sold out crowd here, on their feet. It was a big third down play. 
you're on their side of the field and you don't get it, are you going for it if you're Rose? I think you have to, don't I you? I think you have to also. Robertson, they want the slant. Ty Salio fighting, it's tipped and he catches it. Oh, oh, oh. It's going to be short of a first by a yard, maybe two yards. But the acrobatic tip it to yourself made by Ty Salio and he has double digit catches. What concentration by Ty Salio to make that play. All right, here it comes. No doubt about it. I think I'm going to stand for this one, too. Rose Holman still trying to get the entire play. They have 10 seconds on the play clock. Fourth down and two. Bunched up trio. Bottom of the screen. Rolling left. Robertson throws it. And it's going to be intercepted. Falling down to his knees and making the pick is Mason Owens. Could that seal the deal with five minutes left to go? I couldn't tell if he was throwing it to Hobbs or Greasock out there. It was kind of in between both of them. Well, he definitely overthrew Hobbs, and Greasock was the closest one in the area. Mason Owens puts a halt to that drive from Rolls-Holman. And now there's a discussion about not sure what. Was there a flag on the play? I don't remember seeing one. A lot of discussions today. Oh, sideline warning. All right, yeah, they got excited. Got they got the warning, so it's no penalty yet. Oh, but there's also an unsportsmanlike. Oh, wow. Called against the Lions. So we missed out on that. Does that give Rose Holman a first down? If it happened during the play, fans in the stands are in disbelief, up in arms. The offense of Rose Holman actually came back out onto the field. I don't. Yeah, I would think that would give him a first down. Right. So now, now they're heading back off. So it still is in possession for Mount St. Joseph. Man, it, it's getting. Yeah, we saw the Rose Holman offense come back out, and we thought, oh, oh boy, yeah. what? I don't think stands were going to run out in the field. People in the stands were going to bum rush the referees there. This is a huge penalty, too. It, the referee's still yeah. marking it down, and now he stops. I don't even remember seeing anything remotely close to an unsportsmanlike contact. Yeah, we definitely didn't see a flag thrown, and not sure who it was on either. Don't you always get a warning, a sideline warning, before you get the penalty? Because the, the P announcer said it was a double penalty, so I don't know. Well, the good news for Rose Holman is you have Mount St. Joseph backed up clear at the eight-yard line. They're going to have to start taking timeouts here to stop the clock. Showing blitz. They hand off. Pulling his way forward. Another good gain for Beecham. That's a huge first down gain for them. And gets the goal line in your rear view mirror just a little bit more. Up to the 15 yard line goes Beecham. Taylor, he'll keep it himself. He'll follow Beecham. He does not have a first down yet. He's just a yard shy. But a stop here would be much needed. If you are Rolls Holman, each team still has all three of their timeouts. And the clock getting ready to go under four minutes by the time this play comes off. Taylor will let as much clock wind down as he can. Play clock is still only at 10. With Beecham on his right, another blitz shown and immediately hit in the backfield but bounces off of it. Beecham is going to have a first down, and he's still going. Tiptoeing down the near sideline. 
Cornell Beecham Jr. And what a play by Beecham because Kaiser Bowen came flying through that gap and stuck him to stop him, and he bounced off of it. Perfectly timed blitz, but Beecham Jr. just has been had has had guys bouncing off of him this entire game. He got his feet take out from underneath him too at the end of the play, and he limped into the under the tent. But we got a timeout on the field. We have an injured player down for Rose Holman. Take a break. And we will step aside for the moment. 3:32 left to go. Can't get to a computer? Then we've got you covered. Just go to the Indiana SRN app and stay up to date with all of your favorite teams. You can watch live coverage or relive the experience with our on-demand service. Injured player is up and okay for Rolls home and Ryan Schmidt made it over to the sideline. Mariona McKenzie is the back alongside Taylor. We got quite the discussion going on up here too about player of the game. Trying to time it perfectly again was Kaiser Bowen, but they got him to jump off sides. Player of the game, I tell you what. Ooh, it's going to be a tough one. The running attack of Taylor and Beecham has been extraordinary. Can we have co-players of the game, even though we've got one set of brownies? Can we do that? I don't think that's a bad idea. I don't know. Keith, if you're watching, let us know if we can do that. <laughs> We're making up rules as we go. Yeah. We're I changing mean, them. <laughs> I mean, e even the defensive side, too. If Mount St. Joseph comes out on top here, I mean... The freshman, Nick Paff, has had a great game. So has Noah Hammond. Can't forget about... Sherry's had a great game on the other side, too, but... Austin Price from Mount St. Joseph mm -hmm. leading the team in tackles today. Also has an interception. Taylor will keep it towards the left. Now back towards the middle of the field. Slides down wisely. In between the hashes to the 42. A couple of exclamation points put on this game from Josh Taylor. We may need a deciding vote, honestly. That's true. I'm still waiting to hear from Keith if he's up. Do we have can we reach out to Keith and ask him if they Taylor, another run. Stays in bounds, picks up seven. Rose Holman's going to have to call a timeout and stop this clock at 2.17. And this is where it begins. On the timeouts and trying to force Mount St. Joseph into a fourth down situation. But it appears the Lions may have just enough to seal the deal, barring anything crazy from happening, they will end this three-game losing streak to Rose Holman. We do have approval for co-players of the game if that's the direction we want to go. So maybe, All right. maybe we, should, we should see if our producer has any thoughts on that in our ears for our players of the game. But uh, this would be a huge victory for Mount St. Joseph to go undefeated and win the conference, taking down the defending champ Rose Holman, who they haven't beat in three years. Mount St. Joseph leads the series 11 games to nine. 
But Coach Hop has only beaten them, what, once, twice? Once. And this is his sixth attempt. He will pick up most likely win number two. How about a career record of 41 and 14 at the helm of MSJ? 33 and 9 in conference play, too. That's pretty impressive. These two teams have had some tremendous battles over the years, always seem to find themselves at the top of the HCAC. FYI, Beecham has not been back in the game, I don't think, since that last big run he had. It's been McKenzie in the backfield. And if we don't see Beecham the rest of the day, he's going to finish with 21 carries and 145 yards. Seven yards a carry and a score. What's Taylor done on the ground? Taylor, pretty similar. 22 attempts, which leads the team. 127 yards, but he's got those three touchdowns. Oof. He's got the hat trick. Wow. Another timeout called by Rose. They have a third down and one, does Mount St. Joseph. You know, it's interesting, like you said, because Taylor has or, has – he has the juice with the scoring plays, but when the Mount needed a big play, it was Beecham that made the play. So maybe this is a case where we could have co-players the game. I like that idea. Okay. To wrap up the season, the first time we get we're, to we're do... Being, we're being Switzerland, right? <laughs> <laughs> we got to get prepared for once the, once the clock goes to head on down there. A conversion here we'll just about wrap it up. would seal the deal. If you're Rose, you need a stop. They pack the box. Taylor with the run. Has the first down and more. Inside the 20. Inside the 10, and he slides down inbounds. A smart, experienced player is Zach Taylor. Zach Taylor? Josh Taylor, you Josh did that earlier. I did. I did. Uh, yeah. I, which Taylor did I do earlier? I did Jack, and you did Zach. Is Zach Taylor a golfer? No. Er, no. no I don't I think don't so. Know, something. We're, well, we're sorry for butchering your name sometimes, it's Josh. Josh. We, we we apologize, Josh. We got Taylor right though. Yeah, that's we got fifty percent. And I think this is the best formation you can have. No, not yet. Hand off. McKenzie plows forward to the five. And Mount St. Joseph could, it seems like with the way the running game has been, could punch it in. But better yet is being in that best formation you can be in to end Good the game. Good job, Phyllis. I'm going to head down right now to give out the brownies. Let's go. Safe travels. Mount St. Joseph is going to win this football game. And beat Rolls Holman for the first time in four years. And the celebration has begun. Taylor on the carry. Will not reach the end zone. It won't matter. What a game for the junior quarterback. Despite the two interceptions, he had two passing touchdowns, one to Porter Jr. and one to Beecham. And he also had three rushing touchdowns. Mount St. Joseph is going to clinch a berth in the Division Three playoffs. They are heading to the tournament for the first time in a long time, since 2009. Play clock winds down, they'll need one final kneel down and that will do it. The Lions of the Mount. They conquer Rolls Holman 40 to 31 and they are champions of the Heartland Collegiate Athletic Conference. With this victory, ladies and gentlemen, the Lions finish the season undefeated, 10-0, 7-0 in conference play. 
This is just their sixth playoff appearance in school's history, and again, the first time since 2009. What a season for Coach Hopperton and the Lions. Your final score, 40-31. to 31. Mount St. Joseph does it on Senior Day on Championship Saturday. And they defeat the Fighting Engineers. We'll take a break. We'll be back to give you some final numbers and info and also announce our player of the game in the HCAC Game of the Week. Welcome back to Cincinnati, Ohio. There's the man right there. That's Sean Kroll, ladies and gentlemen. He has some treats for our co-players of the game. That's right. For the first time, Indiana SRN has two players of the game. And no surprise, after the tremendous running game displayed by Mount St. Joseph, Cornell Beecham Jr., is a co-player of the game and his quarterback teammate in Josh Taylor. Those two combined finished the game with 294 yards rushing and four rushing touchdowns. Taylor had three of those. The celebration has begun for Mount St. Joseph and it will go on throughout the rest of this day. It's been a long time coming for Mount St. Joseph. Coach Hopperton in his sixth attempt is able to defeat Rolls-Holman for the second time. What a career it's been, his six years at the helm. They have lost the previous three games to Rolls-Holman, and they have punched a ticket into the Division Three tournament for just the sixth time in its school history and the first time since 2009. And, oh, by the way, no losses this year for the Lions. An undefeated 10-0 season, and they will well represent the HCAC in that Division Three tournament. We will stay here and await the trophy presentation. You'll see Coach Hopperton and his Lions squad get awarded the trophy. Commissioner Jay Jones is in the house. And Sean down on the field will, at one point, not sure if we'll catch it, not sure at what point he'll be able to announce the player of the game, but he is down there waiting to give out the Brownies to our co-players of the game, Beecham Jr. and Taylor. Want to give a shout-out to the rest of our squad, our producer, Nick Lewis, tremendous job as always, our cameraman, Joel Mears, capturing all the good shots in this one. We braved the elements when we got here. It was a very steady snow that was dropping here in Cincinnati, and then it had dissipated. This entire field was covered in snow. Again, great job by the crew here to clean off this field, make it playable. And early on, the snow may have had a factor in the footing for a lot of these players, but as this game went on, they got used to it. Field conditions got a little bit better, and ultimately Mount St. Joseph in that running game captures the HCAC championship.
What a season we've had here on Indiana SRN as well. Plenty of great games. And plenty of game of the weeks that we've had on the network. We've seen some tremendous football. We've seen volleyball championships, boys and girls soccer. And this is a tremendous way to cap off the fall season in the Heartland Conference. And now we will shift our focus towards the winter season with some boys and girls basketball coming our way shortly. Boys and girls basketball starting to get underway in Indiana high school play. Football regionals wrapped up yesterday and now we enter into semi-state play. We'll have some games for you on the network Friday if you are a state of Indiana resident and are looking to capture some of those semi-state games. But again, a great season in the HCAC as far as football is concerned. And I think we got the best of the best from Mount St. Joseph and Rolls-Holman here today. A lot of turnovers to talk about, just giving the football back and forth. Two interceptions thrown by Taylor, and then four total turnovers committed by Rolls-Holman. That proved to be costly. A very fun back and forth game that happened, and Rolls-Holman wasn't going away. Daniel Hurry kept them in this ball game. Five catches, 122 yards, and two touchdowns, and he had the special teams score on the kickoff return. So many opportunities where it looked like Mount St. Joseph could hold on to the double-digit lead and just coast to a victory. But Rose Holman kept fighting back, was not going away quietly. The Lions now grouping together. Team photo, Sean's down there somewhere in that mix. And there is the presentation. The commissioner, Jay Jones, with the trophy, handed over to Coach Hop. Well, there it is. The banner is up. The team picture, Mount St. Joseph champions in the Heartland Conference. They cap off a perfect undefeated regular season after defeating Rose Holman here today, 40-31 to on their home turf. Again, thanks to our entire crew for Sean, Nick, our producer, and Joel, our cameraman. We'll sign off our players of the game. Cornell Beecham Jr. and Josh Taylor set to enjoy some really good treats. And there's Sean actually right now announcing the player of the game. Yeah, he's on the right side there. Can wait for some excitement, I think, here in just a couple moments. There it is. Coach Hopperton's about to come into the picture. Sean handing over the goods. So there we have it. The Lions, they're going to party the rest of the night and then prepare for the tournament. Thanks again to our entire crew. Thanks to the athletic directors and the entire staff, the SIDs, for Commissioner Jay Jones and the rest of the conference. Thanks so much for another great football season here on Indiana SRN. You are watching the HCAC Game of the Week on Indiana SRN and HCAC.TV. So long, everybody.